transmigrated into the Naruto world with nothing but Mihawk's template. Follow Ryujiro as he forges his path to power in the world of Shinobi. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni-sensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn in Naruto with Dracul Mihawk Template. Part 1. If you are friends with the like button, put him in Tsukuyami Genjutsu and make him watch Naruto and Sasuke screaming at each other for 72 hours. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Disclaimer. Author's Note. MC name, Ryujiro. In this story Neji would be in the same year as Ryujiro, Naruto and everyone else, so please don't always ask me about this, the reason would be given in future chapters. Also, due to early graduation of Niji there won't be major changes in Team Guy, it will still be same, but Ryujiro and Niji will have good relations. Armament hockey would be seen by other ninjas as Ryujiro uses them, otherwise fight scenes would be too boring and jarring. Regarding the story, there will be heavy changes to the original plot so be aware and also MC becomes overpowered rather quickly as the story moves forward, and he won't hesitate to take some drastic measures if necessary, so he won't have a moral compass. And there might be some small inconsistency here and there, as it has been too long since I watched Naruto, but these small errors won't matter that much in the story. I will try to fix them if possible. There will also be some changes in original story due to MC, as most characters graduate early, so some events might happen earlier than in anime. Spoiler, MC will also choose Guy as his Jonin instructor, but his circumstances are different, he isn't part of Team Guy, but will only travel with them for short time and something different will happen with Hinata too. MC appearance. He looks like Toji Fushiguro from Jujutsu Kaisen. Younger, image. Older, image. Hidden leaf village. A young figure kept swinging his wooden sword under the scorching sun, sticky sweat clinging to his eyes. His back was already soaked with sweat. But his focus was unprecedentedly concentrated, as if he was in a battle with someone right in front of him. Ha! Ah. Ryujiro gasped heavily, his spirit seemingly reaching its limit. Ignoring the dirt beneath him, Ryujiro collapsed directly onto the ground. His arms were numb and swollen, weak with fatigue. Every day, Ryujiro would battle with the hawk-eyed figure in his spiritual space and learn his swordsmanship. Character Template Dracul Myhawk Character Unlock Progress 1% If my strength reaches Myhawk's level, even if I'm no match for a 6 paths level powerhouse, I'll be able to rival a Kage. Ryujiro muttered to himself with closed eyes. Yes, Ryujiro had arrived in the Naruto world. Without a cool background or a bloodline, not even his parents survived the Third Shinobi World War. Surviving on the village's compensation, Ryujiro managed to get by. Ryujiro was a transmigrator and was familiar with everything about Naruto world. Kige, during this period, indeed belonged to the transcendent powerhouses, but by the later stages of the world, the Kages of the so-called five great ninja villages were all single-handedly defeated by Uchiha Madara. Kage seemed so small in front of Uchiha Madara, let alone that at the time, Uchiha Madara was only at the level of a Kage. Once at the level of the six paths, whether it was a Kage or a Hokage, the difference couldn't be measured in quantity anymore. They existed in different dimensions. He arrived in the Naruto world and gained the character template system. Unlocked the first template. Dracul Myhawk, the great swordsman of the One Piece world, Ryujiro, who was familiar with anime, naturally understood how powerful Myhawk was. His mountain splitting and sea splitting slashes were no less impressive than S rank ninjutsu and the key was that they didn't require chakra or hand seals. A single slash was comparable to an S-rank ninjutsu. Ryujiro rested for a while with his eyes closed before starting to control his chakra again. The method of controlling chakra was taught to him by Irika. His parents who died in this world were friends of Irika because of his reclusive nature. Irika took care of him very well. For someone of Ryujiro's age to be able to manipulate chakra was rare. The kids around his age near his home couldn't compare to him at all. To become a ninja, Chakra was absolutely indispensable. Chakra was also a unique energy characteristic of the Naruto world. Only those with Chakra in their bodies could perform ninjutsu. Ryujiro condensed his Chakra, concentrating it in his hands, 
rapidly flowing and compressing it into a pale blue spherical shape in his hands. Bang! Ryujiro's raisin gan struck the tree trunk. The trunk suddenly caved in, revealing a deep crack, and the flaw that spread from the center of the defect spread outward. Hoo hoo hoo! Ryujiro breathed heavily. His body was still too weak, just using the raisin gan had drained his chakra. He still needed to become stronger, his current strength was not enough. The various monstrous bloodlines and abnormalities in the Naruto world were something he didn't have. The only thing he could rely on was the system and his own efforts. As the avid watcher of Naruto series Ryujiro remembered Jiraiya teaching Naruto about Rasengan, so using the same idea Ryujiro also tried to learn it, but for him it took many months as he had no help from any teacher, so only way he could do it was by trial and error, at last he succeeded. Ryujiro knew that in this world that was filled with beings that could easily destroy planets, he couldn't just rely on Myhawk template to protect himself, he wanted to be ready to face and defeat powerhouses like Madara, Atsutsukis, Ten Tails, etc. And for that he would use everything available, every useful jutsu that would add up on his swordsmanship, he would learn them. He had also learned a lot of other useful jutsu like transformation jutsu, body flicker jutsu, shadow clone jutsu, etc. from the scrolls left by his parents. In the anime, Naruto could easily release the Rasengan because of his Uzumaki lineage, and he was also the inheritor of Azura's chakra. And Sasuke possessed the Uchiha bloodline and later unlocked the Mangekyo Sharingan, and even the Rinnegan. Compared to these two monsters, he was far behind. After regaining his spirit, Ryujiro gripped the sword in his hand, a hint of determination flashing in his eyes. It could begin now. In the vast spiritual world, a figure of a black-haired, hawk-eyed man stood in front of Ryujiro, with eyes as sharp as an eagle's. At this moment, my hawk was about the same height as Ryujiro. The my hawk in the spiritual space was the same age as Ryujiro, and only if Ryujiro's swordsmanship reached a certain level would the my hawk in the spiritual space change. This was my hawk. Indeed extraordinary. Although those sharp eyes were still somewhat naive, they reflected a heart yearning for swordsmanship and lofty enthusiasm. This wasn't Ryujiro's first time fighting my hawk in the spiritual space. Before this, Ryujiro and Maihawk had fought no less than ten times. Yet even so, Maihawk in the spiritual space would catch every tiny flaw and defeat him each time. Victory or defeat was just a thought away. Outside, Ryujiro stood in the vast forest, gripping his sword, his expression constantly changing, beads of sweat dripping from his forehead. In a short time, Ryujiro's face was covered with sweat, so much so that it was raining sweat. A shadow flashed through the forest. Curious eyes watching Ryujiro, blood-red eyes and a black pupil. This person was undoubtedly of the Uchiha clan. Uchiha Shursue looked at Ryujiro with curiosity. What was this kid doing? Although this forest belonged to Kanoha, there were many beasts here that a child couldn't handle. But for some reason, Shursue felt a strange feeling when he looked at Ryujiro. The next moment, Ryujiro trembled, his body bursting with a fierceness that belied his age. He opened his eyes, panting heavily. Sure Sway, who was watching from the shadows, felt this extraordinary aura and his eyes suddenly contracted, his gaze becoming serious. He was not simple. This aura wasn't something that someone of his age could possess. It seemed that the village had got another exceptional talent. A smile appeared at the corner of Sure Sway's mouth. The next moment his figure disappeared. Ryujiro sat on the ground, panting heavily, every inch of his body aching. The key was that at this point, his spirit had reached the edge of what he could bear, and his once resolute gaze now looked weary. After regaining some strength, Ryujiro disappeared into the forest. Effort was important, but blind effort would only backfire. Ryujiro wouldn't do anything that would harm his body, even training was the same. If he exceeded his limits, Ryujiro would choose to rest. Because of his reclusive nature, Ryujiro had few friends, and he wasn't interested in making friends with those naive kids. He was working hard to become stronger, to control his own life and protect himself from any threats in this world. Uchiha Abito, Achihamara, Kagaya? These powerful enemies were ones he would eventually face. Watching the treetops tremble as the wind blew through, Ryujiro sighed silently. It's windy, the village won't be too peaceful. Nighttime, in the Hokage's office. Sandim-sama, here are the documents for Ryujiro. Thank you for your hard work, Sartobi Hiruzen looked through the documents for Ryujiro for a while. His background seems clean. His parents died in the Third Shinobi World War, leaving him alone at home. He often interacts with Irika, but he's a bit solitary. But since he received praise from Shursue, 
He probably isn't as simple as he appears on the surface. The village seems peaceful, but there's potential turmoil lurking beneath. If it erupts, it would be a devastating blow to the village. The Uchiha clan's dissatisfaction with the village is growing stronger, especially after the Nine Tails incident that led to the fourth Hokage's death. The Uchiha clan is currently on thin ice. Ryujiro is old enough to enter the Ninja Academy. Why not arrange for him to go? Irika can pass on the message to him. Just Shirsue's words alone wouldn't make Hiruzen pay attention to Ryujiro. Only if Ryujiro's brilliance truly reached the Hokage's office would Hiruzen focus on him. The matters within the village and the shinobi world are enough to give the elderly third Hokage a headache. Let's hope this hard-earned peace lasts a bit longer. Hiruzen sighed softly and continued with his administrative duties. The next day at noon, Ryujiro woke up. Although his arms were a bit swollen, it didn't affect his training. Moreover, his spirits were fully restored. In yesterday's mental space battle, Ryujiro rarely broke through with a move, but he was still defeated by Maihawk. But this battle brought him many insights. Character Template Dracul Maihawk Character Unlock Progress 1.2% This battle alone increased the progress by 0.2%, which could indeed be considered a significant gain. After a simple cleanup, Ryujiro planned to continue training in his old place for the day. But as soon as he stepped out, he saw a familiar figure. Irika waved and smiled, Ryujiro? Irika sensei What are you doing here? Irika smiled faintly, just passing by to see you. You haven't eaten yet, let me treat you to some ramen. Irika was one of the few people close to Ryujiro, although Irika always treated him like a child. Because even though Ryujiro appeared mature, in Irika's eyes, he was still just a child. Ichiraka ramen. Anyone who has watched Naruto would know about Ichiraka ramen. And Ichiraka ramen is accompanied by many memes. The current Ichirak ramen is just a small stall. Ryujiro sat there, looking at the kind old man making ramen in front of him. This was Tuchi, who many fans believe to be an Atsutsuki in Ryujiro's previous world. Tuchi noticed Ryujiro's curious gaze and couldn't help but feel a little puzzled. What was this kid looking at him for? Could it be that he looked too cool making ramen? Hehe, <laughs> prof. Ryujiro, don't be polite, dig in. Irika smiled faintly. Even though Irika was an ordinary teacher and average ninja, Ryujiro couldn't help but feel a slight fondness towards him. Irika was indeed like a small sun, warming others. After finishing the ramen, Ryujiro slowly said, Irika-sensei, if you have something to say, just say it, no need to beat around the bush. Irika's expression froze for a moment, smiling apologetically, indeed, nothing can escape your notice. He had known Ryujiro for half a year now. This strange kid had a mentality different from others his age. Sometimes talking to Ryujiro felt like talking to someone his own age. Of course, Irika also felt that it was related to Ryujiro's experiences. Losing his parents at such a young age had forced him to mature so much. He lacked the innocence and joy that children should have. This made Irika even more distressed about Ryujiro. Ryujiro, are you interested in entering the Ninja Academy? Irika spoke up. Ninja Academy? Ryujiro was stunned. Damn it. The time for the Ninja Academy entrance exam was now. This is a recommendation letter from Hokage-sama. Irika handed the recommendation letter to Ryujiro. Tuchi's face showed a hint of surprise. A recommendation letter from Hokage-sama? This kid actually caught the attention of Hokage-sama? Even Irika himself found it a bit strange. Last night, Hokage-sama called him to his office and handed him the recommendation letter. Could it be that he had been in contact with Ryujiro too frequently, so he caught the attention of Hokage-sama? Recommendation letter? Yesterday, when he returned from the mental world to reality, he could feel someone's gaze on him, but it disappeared in a short while. Ryujiro's perception was beyond that of a normal person, surpassing his peers by far. After accepting the recommendation letter from Irika, Ryujiro thanked him and disappeared from Irika's view. He didn't immediately reply to Irika. Because his time was precious, he didn't want to waste too much time on boring things. Training was his top priority. Ryujiro entered his mental space again. After entering the system space, Ryujiro's eyes were dispersed and void, like dead eyes. Two figures were fighting in the mental space. Although the young Maihawk looked tender, his sharp yellow eyes were captivating. Ding! 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 The blades collided. Ryujiro's expression wasn't very good. Although it seemed evenly matched in the small details, Ryujiro was not as good as Maihawk. After about two hours, Ryujiro gasped heavily as he exited the mental space. His arms were trembling because of the prolonged training. 
Character Template Dracul Myhawk Character Unlock Progress 1.4% Although it was just a 0.2% increase, each improvement was significant for Ryujiro. Understanding of swordsmanship and sword techniques Accumulated combat experience from battle after battle in the mental world would become nourishment for Ryujiro's growth. In addition to combat, Ryujiro also needed to improve his physical strength. To unleash powerful strikes, strong physicality was indispensable. Push-ups, sit-ups, running around the forest ten times, these were all essential training for Ryujiro. The day passed quickly, and before he knew it, dusk had fallen. Add in. I know Niji is supposed to be older than Naruto and everyone else but, in this story he is in same year as everyone else. It'll make sense in future chapters, as in this story he will have some more use and importance, hope you all understand. Also due to early graduation of Niji there won't be major changes in Team Guy, it will still be same team with Lee, Ten Ten, and Niji, but Ryujiro and Niji will have good friendship. Now, don't ask me question regarding this, you'll get your answers in future chapters. If you want more information regarding this, go read information chapter at first. Also, this is just a fanfiction so just go with the flow. Enrollment <laughs> Nightfall As Ryujiro lay on his bed, he pondered while looking at the recommendation letter beside him. The Kanoha Ninja Academy was established by the second Hokage, Tobarama Senju, to nurture the young blood of Kanoha. Its purpose was to ensure the inheritance of the will of fire. However, Ryujiro, who knew all about the hidden darkness of Kanoha, knew that the village had a dark side. The roots of Kanoha had long been corrupted, with figures like Danzo Shimura lurking in the shadows of the Hokage, making it unimaginable. Those who believed in the will of fire probably didn't know that it was the benevolent third Hokage, along with Danzo's scheming, who caused the downfall of the Uchiha clan a year later. Enrolling meant the opportunity to learn more ninjutsu. Of course, the ninja academy didn't offer much in terms of techniques. What it did provide was ninja knowledge and education, focusing on taijutsu, shurikenjutsu, and practical combat training. Everyone from Kanoha 11 were already attending the Ninja Academy. They were the ones who will be key figures of Kanoha in future. But Ryujiro believed that with his system, he possessed infinite potential, and his future was no weaker than anyone else's. In that case, let's enroll. And slowly, get to know them. The next day, Ryujiro found Irika. You're enrolling? Irika looked at Ryujiro in surprise. Ryujiro nodded. Under Irika's guidance, Ryujiro entered the Ninja Academy. Ordinary civilians with poor aptitude had no chance of entering the Ninja Academy. The Ninja Academy was meant to train ninjas, and those without the potential to become ninjas had no qualification to enter. Currently, the most outstanding student of the Ninja Academy was Sasuke Achiha of the Achiha clan. Sasuke was the pride of the Achiha clan, a renowned genius in the Ninja Academy and the object of admiration for many young girls. Which always confused Ryujiro as how could girls this young be crazy for a boy, maybe in this world due to wars and instability, girls matured much earlier, compared to Earth. Recommended by the third Hokage? The headmaster of the Ninja Academy looked at Ryujiro with surprise. A person recommended by the third Hokage must be extraordinary. Irika, let this kid be in your class, the headmaster put away the recommendation letter and said to Irika. Irika had no objections. From the beginning, he hoped Ryujiro would be in his class. Leading Ryujiro to the classroom, Irika stopped him with one hand at the door, and as he looked up, his mind was filled with dark thoughts. Surely, it was another prank by Naruto. Naruto wasn't mature yet and was famous in the class for being a troublemaker and a slacker. Pushing open the door, a pot of white powder fell, and Irika stepped back with Ryujiro. At that moment, Naruto with his blonde hair excitedly looked at the door. When he saw Irika staring at him with a dark face, he immediately lowered his head and took out a book to cover his face. Such a boring game could only be played by Naruto. Irika led Ryujiro into the classroom, attracting the curiosity of many students. Ryujiro scanned the people in their seats. Yamanaka Ino, Haruno Sakura, Uzumaki Naruto, Achiha Sasuke, Akimichi Choji, the future of Kanoha were all gathered in this class. Sakura, haven't you noticed how handsome this guy is? Ryujiro's handsome appearance, dark green eyes, and unique temperament instantly caught Ino's attention. Sakura pouted. Oomph, he's nothing compared to our Sasuke. Since when did Sasuke become yours? Sasuke belongs to me. Compared to the stunning arrival of Ryujiro, Ino still preferred Sasuke, whom she had known for a long time. 
Sasuke's cold demeanor and his status as an Uchiha made him the object of admiration for many girls in the class. Before long, Sakura and Ino began to argue. Sakura, Ino, what are you two doing? Iruka scolded both of them. Sakura and Ino stopped, coldly glancing at each other before snorting. Cough, cough, cough. From now on, Ryujiro will be part of our class. Your classmates now. Ryujiro sit there. Iruka pointed to a seat. Ryujiro looked over, and his gaze slightly changed. Who is that girl? Hyuga Hinata? Hinata noticed Ryujiro's gaze. Her small face blushed shyly as she lowered her head, making her even cuter. However, there was a hostile gaze directed at Hinata. It was Niji. The current Niji harbored only hatred for the main family. Hinata, as a member of the main family in Niji's eyes, was not worthy of the main family's status with her gentle personality. Ryujiro walked over and sat down next to Hinata. Hello, I'm Ryujiro. Ryujiro flashed a bright smile, a smile that stirred the hearts of countless girls in the classroom. Compared to Sasuke's cold indifference at this moment, they were more enamored with Ryujiro. H hello, I'm Hinata Hyuga. Hinata stuttered shyly, not daring to meet Ryujiro's eyes. Even her speech was low, as she kept her head down. Ryujiro didn't mind. He knew Hinata's personality was like this. Even speaking to the opposite gender made her blush. Especially in front of the uniquely charming Ryujiro. Sasuke glanced at Ryujiro with disdain and clicked his tongue. For this person who stole his limelight, Sasuke was still somewhat discontented. He was a genius of the Uchiha clan. How could he be overshadowed by a commoner? Class time passed quickly, with only a few students in the classroom paying attention. Even Ryujiro immersed himself in his own mental space, battling with young Maihawk. Hinata, who was beside him, watched Ryujiro attentively. He's sweating so much. What's wrong with him? He's been sweating non-stop. Although the weather is hot now, it's very cool inside the classroom unlike outside. Is Ryujiro feeling unwell? Suddenly, Ryujiro opened his eyes wide, panting heavily. Sweat dripped from his eyebrows, and his face showed signs of exhaustion. Ryujiro, this is for you? Hinata's voice was smaller than a mosquito's, as she handed a handkerchief to Ryujiro, keeping her head down. Ryujiro was taken aback for a moment, then smiled, Thank you, Hinata. After saying this, Hinata's face turned even redder. Ryujiro wiped away the sweat from his forehead, hesitated for a moment, and decided not to return the handkerchief, which was soaked with sweat, to Hinata. Ino and Sakura looked at Hinata and Ryujiro in surprise. Hinata actually talked to someone, that's rare, and it's Ryujiro. Could it be that Ryujiro is Hinata's type? Everyone present knew about Hinata's shy and timid personality, which had always been a problem. Even communicating with others was particularly difficult for her. But Sakura and Ino had looked a few times and found that it was Hinata who took the initiative to talk to Ryujiro, which surprised them both. At the same time, Niji also looked at Ryujiro and Hinata with a gloomy expression. His fists clenched tightly, even trembling from the force. After class, a curious Naruto came over and greeted Ryujiro. Hey, green eyes. Since you're a transfer student, you should be very strong, right? How about sparring with me, the strongest in the class, Naruto-sama? Naruto's words made everyone in the class unable to hold back their laughter. Haha, Naruto is bragging again. He's obviously a loser. The strongest in the class is obviously Sasuke. Other classmates mercilessly mocked Naruto. But two sharp gazes fell on Ryujiro, one from Niji, and the other from Sasuke. They were both curious about Ryujiro's strength. This person is Lady Hinata's friend, so he's my enemy. He stole my spotlight. Next time we spar, I'll make sure this guy feels my power. Niji and Sasuke had different thoughts, but they both saw Ryujiro as a thorn in their side. Arg, you guys are so annoying. I'm not a loser. Naruto's face flushed red as he glared at them angrily. Ryujiro couldn't help but chuckle. Right now, you're no match for me. You're too weak. Damn it, don't underestimate me. I'll show you how strong I am. Transformation Jutsu. With a poof, smoke billowed, and Naruto transformed into Iruka, pointing at Ryujiro and laughing, how about that? I'm amazing, right? Ryujiro couldn't help but facepalm. Naruto at this time was still just a child. It would be difficult to communicate with him normally. Tisich, it's just transformation jutsu? Sasuke looked at Naruto with disdain and clicked his tongue. Ryujiro sighed helplessly and formed hand seals. Poof, another puff of smoke, and another Ryujiro appeared beside the first one. What's this? 
Shadow Clone Jutsu? Is he really the same age as us? The appearance of Ryujiro's Shadow Clones caused a commotion in the classroom. The kids were amazed at Ryujiro's skill. The Shadow Clone Jutsu that Ryujiro displayed was something even Sasuke and Niji hadn't mastered yet. But Ryujiro had already mastered it proficiently. Ryujiro Kuen, you're amazing. Hinata's small eyes widened in admiration as she looked at Ryujiro. Damn it. It's just clones. I can do it too. Unwilling to admit defeat, Naruto dispelled his transformation jutsu. Clone jutsu. Poof. A clone of Naruto appeared next to him, instantly causing the whole class to burst into laughter. Although you're a loser, Naruto, you're good at entertaining everyone. If you can't become a ninja, you should join the circus as an actor. That would suit you well. And shadow clones are not the same as clones. Shadow clones are a higher level jutsu than clones. Mockery, ridicule, disdain. Ryujiro looked at the dejected Naruto and couldn't help but sigh. This was the treatment Naruto received now. In fact, Naruto's talent was not bad, he was not inferior to geniuses like Sasuke. The reason he couldn't use ninjutsu at this time was because his chakra needed to suppress the nine tails to stabilize the seal. Ryujiro glanced at Hinata again. Did my arrival change the story? It seemed that Hinata in this period didn't have any admiration for Naruto. Instead, she mostly felt more pity and sympathy for him. Naruto, you're not strong enough yet. Come challenge me when you've improved. Ryujiro was taller than everyone in the classroom. Although he was the same age as them, he seemed more like an adult. You're not bad. Naruto's body trembled, his eyes turning red as he looked at Ryujiro. Ryujiro. Naruto forcibly held back his tears. Neglected for so long and subjected to everyone's malice, Naruto was moved by Ryujiro's simple words. He wiped away the tears at the corner of his eyes and said proudly, I don't need you to tell me that. I'm gonna be the Hokage, believe it. <clears throat> the future's seventh Hokage. With the chakra of Azura, you're practically a child of destiny. If Ryujiro hadn't awakened the system, he might have to rely on Naruto to live out his remaining years. The others didn't understand why Ryujiro would express kindness to Naruto when he was clearly a loser. This loser sometimes even caused the whole class to be punished, which was extremely annoying. Then it was time for class. Iruka walked in and frowned when he saw Naruto's red eyes. Naruto, what's wrong with you? Did something happen? It's okay. Naruto quickly returned to his seat. Iruka was puzzled. Was this kid being bullied? A day passed like this, and ninja school's lessons left Ryujiro feeling bored. Some lessons were about the history of the Shinobi World War, the history of Konoha's development, and the greatness of the Hokage through the ages, which were all nonsense to Ryujiro, who was familiar with the history of the Konoha. After leaving the school gates, Ryujiro bid farewell to Hinata and planned to continue training. But on the way, a figure blocked his path. Ryujiro looked with interest at the expressionless boy in front of him. Niji, what's the matter with you? Ryujiro grinned. It was obvious to Ryujiro that it must have been something related to Hinata with why he was stopped by Niji. Niji hated Hinata and hated everyone from the main family. Anyone who had contact with Hinata at school were also hated by Niji. He was a genius, a rare genius of the Hyuga clan, but because of the division between the main family and the branch family, geniuses like him were meant to serve the main family. The caged bird cursed seal on his forehead was the branch family's shackles to the main family. If it weren't for this cursed seal, his father might not have been killed by the main family. Stop associating with Lady Hinata, she's not someone a commoner like you has the right to be friends with. Niji looked coldly at Ryujiro, his white eyes particularly cold. Who Hinata chooses to associate with isn't something a member of the branch family like you can dictate? Ryujiro said calmly. Besides, as a member of the branch family, you don't have the authority to interfere in Hinata's friendships. Veins bulged on Niji's forehead, and chakra surged from his body. Clearly, Ryujiro's words had provoked Niji. In the end, Niji just snorted coldly, suppressing his emotions. Is rationality above hatred? Ryujiro smiled faintly as he watched Niji's back. He wasn't afraid of Niji. Although his talent might not be as good as Niji's, he had put in much more effort than these geniuses. At this time, Niji's strength surpassed that of most people his age. Even the current Sasuke might not be able to easily handle Niji. Ryujiro had been increasing his chakra reserves since he was a child. Now, his chakra was no less than that of a mid-level jonin. Moreover, he had techniques like Raisengan, an A-rank ninjutsu, and a physique surpassing his peers. He might have the strength to fight Niji. But what he lacked now was a good sword. Ryujiro was a swordsman, 
and only with a sword in hand could he fully unleash his complete strength. The next day, Ryujiro left early, carrying a wooden sword on his back. For some reason, the wooden sword gave Ryujiro a sense of security. Character Template, Dracul Myhawk. Character Unlock Progress, 1.6%, it's still only 1.6%. I wonder when I'll be able to hear the breath of all things. Only a swordsman who can hear the breath of all things has the possibility to reach higher realms. The first step to becoming a swordsman is to become one with the sword, listen to the breath of all things. Anything in this world has breath. Only by hearing that faint breath can one have the chance to cut off everything. So, then as a swordsman, one will be unstoppable. It's a long road ahead for me to become a swordsman. The problem is the damage my wooden sword can cause is too small. If I encounter real danger, this wooden sword will be useless. I also want a good sword, but when I went to the blacksmith, he refused me outright because of this young body. At the academy gate, Ryujiro suddenly stopped, looking at two figures. Black short hair, blood red eyes, unique tear troughs, and a cold demeanor. Achiha Itachi. The man who bore the darkness of Kanoha, Ryujiro always felt that it was such a pity for a genius like Achiha Itachi to meet his death in such a way. Including the current Shursue. Soon, even Shursue, a prodigy like him, would fall. Itachi was already a member of the ANBU, serving as a double spy for both the Achiha and Kanoha. Forgive me, Sasuke. Next time, with a smile on his face, Itachi tapped a finger at Sasuke's forehead. Sasuke currently is completely obsessed with his older brother. Likewise, if it came to it, Itachi would never turn against Kanoha but choose to annihilate the Achiha clan, leaving only Sasuke behind. Ultimately, Itachi's choice was just a lack of trust in his father. Achiha Fugaku, who possessed the Mangekyo Sharingan, could have already acted to overthrow the Kanoha leadership if he wanted to. He could have incited another Nine Tails incident, but Fugaku suppressed the dissent within the Achiha clan. Between the clan and Kanoha, Itachi ultimately chose Kanoha, and made the young Sasuke bear a deep hatred. Oof, brother, you say that every time. I don't believe you anymore. Sasuke coldly snorted. Itachi patted Sasuke's head, then watched as he entered the school. Only then did he notice Ryujiro's gaze. Black short hair, dark green eyes. Was this the boy Shursue mentioned? He does give off a different vibe. I wonder why he keeps staring at me, and Itachi felt a hint of pity in Ryujiro's eyes. Am I mistaken? I have never met this boy before, perhaps I'm mistaken. But even Shursue found this boy interesting, which was intriguing. Itachi only glanced at him briefly before leaving. After all, the Uchiha clan and the Kanoha leadership are at odds, and the Uchiha clan was already discussing a coup. Although Shursue has made thorough preparations to use Kodo Amitsukami when the Uchiha clan launches the coup, he did not anticipate Danzo's manipulations from behind the scenes. It's regrettable. Shursue's talent was even more outstanding than Itachi's. Ryujiro Kuen? Hinata saw Ryujiro lowering her head shyly and greeted him. It's Hinata. Let's go together. Ryujiro smiled. Plop. Hinata's heart skipped a beat, and she shyly replied, lowering her head as she walked into the school with Ryujiro. At this time, Hinata didn't have a dependency on Naruto like in the anime. Rather, ahem. An evil thought crossed Ryujiro's mind. Naruto. I'm sorry. In the original anime, Hinata was like the epitome of a good wife and loving mother. A girl like her would be hard to resist for anyone. Though my actions are akin to that of a scoundrel, Hinata and Naruto haven't married yet. Besides their friendship as classmates, there are no other feelings between them. When did Hinata become so close to Ryujiro? I didn't see that coming. The usually shy Hinata actually took the initiative. Ryujiro looks good too, but I still prefer Sasuke. Though Ino and Sakura bickered often, their relationship wasn't bad. Seeing Hinata and Ryujiro walking into school together surprised them a bit. I asked my dad yesterday. Ryujiro was recommended to the school by the third Hokage. Recommended by the Hokage? Sakura covered her mouth in shock, looking at Ryujiro incredulously. What secrets does Ryujiro hold to get recommended by the Hokage to enter the school? Most of the time at the Ninja Academy, Ryujiro didn't really listen to the lectures. He already knew this knowledge by heart. Most of the time, Ryujiro immersed himself in his spiritual world, comprehending the battles with Maihawk. Only in this way could he quickly improve his strength and the progress of his character template. He had to step into the realm of swordsmen as soon as possible, so he could unleash flying slashes comparable to A-rank ninjutsu. And the attention from his classmates towards Ryujiro gradually decreased. 
Although many girls wanted to talk to Ryujiro, his attitude towards them was completely different from his attitude towards Hinata. It's this disparity in attitude that made many people resent Ryujiro. Of course, what's even more incomprehensible is that Ryujiro actually has such a good relationship with Naruto, the loser. Naruto has always been rejected and questioned by the villagers, and there are only a few in the academy willing to accept him. But later in the series, Naruto gained the recognition of the villagers step by step through his own efforts. In the forest, Naruto panted heavily as he lay on the ground, covered in various injuries, none of which were serious, just minor scratches. Ah! Ryujiro! Why do I always lose to you? Naruto shouted unwillingly. Ryujiro smiled faintly, cause you're too weak, there is a huge gap in our strength. No, but every time I feel like I'm about to catch up to you, you instantly level up again. What's going on? Naruto was puzzled. During this time, Ryujiro also guided Naruto in taijutsu and chakra control. Naruto's talent was high, and even Ryujiro was somewhat envious. After all, Naruto was the protagonist of this world. But Ryujiro himself never slacked off. He surpassed his limits time and time again, breaking through the barriers each time. Ryujiro's efforts were several times that of Naruto's, and besides, Ruji Aro always concealed his strength when sparring with Naruto. After all, there are eyes watching them from the shadows. Enbyu ninjas wearing cat-like masks have been watching Ryujiro and Naruto. Naruto, as the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails, was very important for Konoha, and Hiruzen had always been watching him. Late at night, in the Hokage's office. Has Ryujiro become friends with Naruto? Hiruzen pondered in his office. Perhaps it was because both Ryujiro and Naruto had lost their parents at a young age that Ryujiro had grown so close to Naruto. After all, he was just a child, there was no need to speculate so much about him. Sandame sama Naruto has never won against Ryujiro in their sparring matches. I even feel like this kid is holding back his strength. An Umbu ninja respectfully stood before Hiruzen and spoke solemnly. Naruto's strength was inferior to Ryujiro's? This didn't surprise Hiruzen too much. After all, Naruto had always been a laggard in school. Although he was a laggard, Naruto was a Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. So, Hiruzen did not underestimate Naruto because of his performance in school. I understand. Keep an eye on them. Yes, Sandame sama As the words fell, the Umbu ninja disappeared in an instant. Ryujiro, a civilian background. Whether he's a genius or not remains to be seen. Now he urgently needed a civilian genius like Minato back in the day. Although he was the Hokage, he was getting old. The pressure brought by the Uchiha clan was becoming increasingly heavy. Despite the calm appearance of the village, there were hidden undercurrents. During this time, Ryujiro had been immersed in his spiritual space, and everyone was more or less aware of Ryujiro's relationship with Hinata. Compared to Ryujiro, the most popular figure in the class was still Sasuke, with only a few people paying attention to Ryujiro. Every time Ryujiro emerged from the spiritual world, Hinata never forgot to hand him a handkerchief. And now Naruto had become Ryujiro's shadow, he was always following behind Ryujiro. Compared to the original Hinata, the current Hinata was much more confident. Her strength was also rapidly increasing, and recently, she was stimulated by Ryujiro in a sparring match, even unlocking her Byakugan powers. As Ryujiro emerged from the spiritual world, he didn't feel too tired compared to before, just a bit absent-minded. Ryujiro Kuen. Hinata handed him a handkerchief. Ryujiro smiled faintly, taking the handkerchief to wipe the sweat off his forehead. Character Template. Dracul Myhawk. Character Unlock Progress. 5%. It took two months, and although the progress was not significant, Ryujiro had gained a lot of insights into swordsmanship, and his foundation in swordsmanship was extremely solid. And now, his chakra was even more abundant. Ryujiro now possessed far greater strength compared to his peers. An average ninja might be killed in one move if they were careless against him. Even the current Sasuke might not be a match for Ryujiro. All the students gather on the playground. Iruka walked into the classroom and shouted. All the students got to the playground in confusion. It turned out to be a surprise test this time. Ninja Academy tested students' progress in their studies every once in a while. The test was divided into three categories. Taijutsu, Shuriken Jutsu, and Clone Jutsu. First was Clone Jutsu, and the first to be tested was Sasuke, who walked up confidently and easily created three clones. Iruka nodded in satisfaction. Uchiha Sasuke, pass. Indeed, he was from the Uchiha clan. Ah, Sasuke-kun is so cool. 
Ino and Sakura both swooned. These two were Sasuke's biggest fans. Before this, the top student in the class had always been Sasuke. Being the top student meant being the student with the highest overall grades in the class. The only one who had always been below Sasuke was Niji. Next, Yamashina Natsu, Himimai, Yamashita Yoko. After about a dozen people, it was finally Ryujiro's turn. Next, Ryujiro. Irika still had high expectations for Ryujiro, after all, this kid had been working hard since he knew him. He even heard that this kid had already mastered the Shadow Clone Jutsu proficiently. If that was true, then the Clone Jutsu would be a piece of cake for Ryujiro. Bang, with a loud noise, accompanied by smoke, five clones appeared beside Ryujiro. Even Irika couldn't help but inhale sharply. Ryujiro had actually created five clones at once. He had underestimated this kid. Ryujiro. Excellent. <laughs> Sasuke snorted disdainfully. But he had indeed not expected that Ryujiro could create five clones at once, which added a bit of pressure to Sasuke. Sasuke was just annoyed that another competitor for the top student position had emerged. And he was just a civilian. I can't lag behind a civilian like him. Next, Naruto. Naruto sniffled. Watch me, everyone. Clone Jutsu. Iruka was also somewhat surprised to see Naruto's perfect clones. Naruto had always been a last student in the class, unable to even use the clone Jutsu proficiently, but now he had successfully performed it. Everyone present was extremely surprised. This guy actually passed. How is this possible? Those who had mocked Naruto for being a loser could not perform the clone Jutsu proficiently themselves. It was just because of Naruto's status that they could openly ridicule him as a laggard. The next test was Shuriken Jutsu. In daily training, Ryujiro's Shuriken Jutsu was even more accurate than that of a Jonin. Before this, Sasuke's score had always been the highest at 97. Sasuke picked up the Shuriken with a cool look. Achiha Sasuke. 99 points. Ha. 99 points. All the Shuriken hit the target, with only one deviating slightly from the bullseye. As expected of Sasuke Kuen, you're as strong as ever. It seems that Sasuke Kuen is going to take first place again this time. The genius of the Achiha clan is truly terrifying. Hearing the surrounding discussions, Sasuke looked proud and glanced at Ryujiro. This guy shouldn't be able to surpass me, but he's just a civilian, even if he's amazing, he can't be better than me. Niji Hyuga also scored 97 points. Next, Ryujiro. Ryujiro Kuen. You can do it. Hinata cheered for Ryujiro. Compared to the seriousness of the others, Ryujiro seemed a bit lazy as he threw the shuriken casually. Idiot. How can you expect a good score when you throw shurikens so carelessly? Sasuke sneered disdainfully. But when Iruka went to check the target he suddenly froze, took a deep breath, and announced solemnly, Ryujiro. Shuriken Jutsu, 100 points. What? 100 points? How is that possible? Sasuke and Niji both wore expressions of disbelief, checking each target thoroughly. It's true. All of them hit dead center. This guy wasn't just throwing them randomly. Sasuke clenched his fists, unwilling to accept it, as he looked at Ryujiro. The esteemed Uchiha air was actually weaker than a commoner in kunai throwing. Their classmates were all shocked, looking at Ryujiro in disbelief. Could it be that Sasuke's position as the top student was about to change hands? It was too early to say that as there was still the main test to come. Unlike the previous two tests, the sparring was a combat assessment, a true test of combat between the two sides. Sasuke looked at Ryujiro. He must win against him in this fight, otherwise, he would feel unworthy of being an Achiha. Seeing Sasuke's burning gaze, Ryujiro couldn't help but smile. Just because he scored 100 points, Sasuke was feeling so challenged. The upcoming fight would also showcase his training results. With one hand resting on his wooden sword, Ryujiro's eyes flashed with rare excitement. Even Naruto scored 84 points in kunai throwing, reaching an above-average level. Iruka was incredibly shocked by Naruto's progress. Was it because of this kid, Ryujiro? It seemed like Naruto had made good friends. A faint smile tugged at Iruka's lips. Many felt utterly dejected. Previously, with Naruto around, even if their scores were poor, they wouldn't end up at the bottom. But now that Naruto had reached an above-average level, they lost that sense of superiority. Let's begin the practical assessment. Who's up first? Iruka scanned the crowd, and except for Sasuke, Niji and Ryujiro, everyone else took a step back. Obviously, they didn't want to confront strong opponents like Sasuke, Ryujiro, and Niji. Sasuke stepped forward, his intense gaze fixed on Ryujiro, 
as he spoke to Irika, Irika Sensei, I challenge Ryujiro. A head-to-head -head showdown right off the bat? Everyone was incredibly curious about Ryujiro's strength and wondered if he could use shadow clones, making him comparable to Sasuke and Niji. A thick tension filled the air. Everyone looked at Ryujiro, wondering if he would accept Sasuke's challenge. Ryujiro, do you accept? Iruka asked, with some concern in his heart. After all, Sasuke was from the Uchiha clan. Moreover, Sasuke had already mastered the C-rank ninjutsu, fire style, fireball jutsu. Sasuke's strength was probably close to that of a genin now. I accept. Ryujiro accepted straightforwardly. As for Sasuke and Ryujiro, Ryujiro's strength had always been a mystery, and what puzzled them even more was why Ryujiro had a wooden sword at his waist. A wooden sword had no killing power for a ninja. Are you ready? Irika asked solemnly. Both Ryujiro and Sasuke nodded without any objections. Then, let's start by forming the seal of confrontation. Ryujiro and Sasuke formed the seal facing each other. Irika glanced at both of them. Start! As soon as the word fell, Sasuke dove towards Ryujiro without hesitation, feinting an attack towards Ryujiro's upper body, but his real target was Ryujiro's lower body. Ryujiro remained calm, having already seen through Sasuke's small trick. Sasuke threw a punch, a smirk playing on his lips. He got him. Boom. But in the next moment, Sasuke froze. The Ryujiro in front of him turned into a wooden stump, and at that moment, a wooden sword was pressed against Sasuke's neck. Sasuke's eyes widened, a look of disbelief crossing his face, as if he had seen a ghost. Substitution Jutsu? Iruka exclaimed in astonishment. Could it be that Ryujiro had already mastered the substitution Jutsu so proficiently? Ryujiro's parents were former ninjas, and he had mastered some of the basic ninjutsu from the few remaining ninja scrolls. The substitution jutsu was just the most basic ninjutsu, and from the very beginning, Ryujiro's goal in training was to master it proficiently. Sasuke lowered his head in disappointment. I lost. Silence fell over the surroundings. Everyone looked at Ryujiro, their mouths agape, their eyes filled with shock. Was it over just like that? Has Ryujiro already mastered all the basic ninjutsu, including the substitution jutsu? They even suspected whether Ryujiro had come to the ninja school just to challenge them. Even the usually indifferent Shikamaru stared wide-eyed at Ryujiro. The fight is over. Ryujiro wins. Both of you, perform seal of reconciliation and make peace. Sasuke lowered his head and made the seal with Ryujiro in peace, then returned to the crowd dejectedly. Sasuke had always been the top student, but now Ryujiro, who suddenly appeared, shattered his pride as a member of the Uchiha clan. As the son of the Uchiha clan leader, he actually lost to a commoner. Well, he actually defeated Sasuke so easily. It's the first time I've seen Sasuke beaten. So amazing. It ended in just a moment. Is Ryujiro really the same age as us? He's a true genius. Ryujiro's quick victory elicited exclamations from everyone, their faces filled with admiration as they looked at him. Ryujiro Kuen, Hinata, who had been standing on the sidelines, handed Ryujiro a water glass. Ryujiro looked at Hinata, then placed a hand on her head. Thank you, Hinata. Instantly, Hinata froze, her entire body stiffening, her face turning red as she involuntarily lowered her head. Seeing the shy Hinata, Ryujiro smiled faintly. As for Niji, who was watching from the side, he couldn't help but feel resentful as he looked at Ryujiro and Hinata. Niji hadn't expected Ryujiro to defeat Sasuke so quickly. Ryujiro, who could proficiently use the substitution jutsu, already stood at a different level from them. Moreover, Niji had observed Ryujiro's chakra movements during the match. Ryujiro had even concealed his true strength in this match. He was simply no match for Ryujiro. And after interacting with Hinata, Hinata's personality had also changed. As the talented member of the Hyuga clan, Hinata's talents were gradually being revealed. Hinata possessed talents that were not inferior to Niji's. It wouldn't be long before even Hinata would surpass him. Was the fate of the branch family always predetermined? In the subsequent practical tests, although Naruto lost to Shikamaru, Shikamaru didn't win easily. If it weren't for the Shadow Bind Jutsu, perhaps Shikamaru would have lost to Naruto. It's hard to imagine that Naruto, who used to be the class's bottom, had progressed so quickly. Chiha clan. Sasuke was alone in his room, still reeling from the blow dealt by his loss to Ryujiro, leaving him unable to accept it. At that moment, Itachi happened to return. Hearing his mother mention Sasuke's unusual behavior today, 
Itachi pushed the door open and entered. Seeing Sasuke, who was different from usual, Itachi asked with concern, What's wrong, Sasuke? Brother, I lost today. Itachi's expression changed slightly, looking at Sasuke in astonishment. Itachi knew about Sasuke's talent. Although it was somewhat inferior to his own during his younger days, in today's Kanoha, Sasuke was still a remarkable genius. Before this, Sasuke had never lost to anyone. Was it that kid from the Hyuga clan? Although Itachi often teased Sasuke, he had always been keeping an eye on Sasuke's school life. Sasuke shook his head. It wasn't Niji Hyuga. It was a commoner. A commoner? Even Itachi was stunned to hear this. Who was it? Ryujiro. Itachi's expression changed once again. That little guy. He didn't expect his strength to surpass Sasuke's. He truly deserved the recommendation from the third Hokage. Was the third Hokage trying to grow another civilian hero like the fourth Hokage? The fourth Hokage was a legendary figure who fell while protecting Kanoha. It's worth noting that at that time, the fourth Hokage was still very young. After the end of the Nine Tails attack, the major clans of Kanoha mourned for the fourth Hokage's death. Because of the fourth Hokage's fall, the elderly third Hokage had to continue sitting in the position of the Hokage. Although Kanoha was still the leading village in the ninja world, the internal problems accumulating in Kanoha could lead to significant changes if they were to erupt. He had to make a decision. After some time, the renowned Shunshin no Shursui fell, and the higher-ups of Kanoha remained silent about Shursui's death. How Shursui died was something Itachi knew very well. Shursui, as his only good friend, jumped off a cliff in front of him, triggering Itachi's activation of the Mangekyo Sharingan. Shursui's death. The Uchiha clan's extermination may not be far off. Under the waterfall, Ryujiro couldn't help but sigh. Kanoha was gradually weakening. After the Uchiha clan would be destroyed, Kanoha would surely lose its title of the strongest village in the shinobi world. He needed to train even harder. Five months later, Ryujiro appeared more mature, with his light skin and flowing hair. The wooden sword at Ryujiro's waist had been replaced by the renowned sword Aim no Habakiri, one of the 21 great grade swords. Character Template, Dracul Myhawk. Character Unlock Progress, 12.1%, Aim no Habakiri was the reward given by the system when Ryujiro reached 10% progress. Not only that, the Myhawk in Ryujiro's spiritual space had also undergone changes. Now, he possessed the ability to hear the breath of all things. However, he had not yet reached the level of a swordsman. Currently, although Ryujiro could cut through anything, he couldn't execute the flying slash attack no matter how hard he tried. On the other hand, the Maihawk in his spiritual space could freely execute the flying slash attack. At present, Ryujiro was no match for the Maihawk in his spiritual space. The arrogant Sasuke would undergo a significant change soon. In less than a year. Denso. That guy had noticed him. With Ryujiro's perception now, he could sense the root ninja lurking nearby, watching him. It seemed he had to accelerate his improvement and enter the realm of swordsmen as soon as possible. Ryujiro I'm here. Naruto dashed out of the forest. Naruto's strength now far exceeded that of the original anime. Naruto and Ryujiro's relationship was getting better and better, and Naruto almost regarded Ryujiro as his brother. But if he influenced him too much would the incident of Naruto stealing the Forbidden Scroll still happen? If not, would Naruto's signature move Multiple Shadow Clone Jutsu still appear? After all, the Multiple Shadow Clone Jutsu was a Forbidden Jutsu, and only someone with the bloodline of the Uzumaki clan and the Chakra of the Nine Tails could create so many clones. Ryujiro still vividly remembered the exhilarating feeling when he saw Naruto use the Shadow Clone Jutsu for the first time in the series. Ryujiro, can you teach me the Jutsu you used last time? Naruto's eyes showed a strange light. The Raisengan. Although changing the original story might attract the attention of the third Hokage and Danzo, but he didn't want to just follow the plot, he wanted to see what changes he would bring to this world. Yeah. Ryujiro nodded. Awesome. If I become Hokage in the future, you'll be my most important shinobi. With a loud thud, Ryujiro's fist landed on Naruto's forehead. <laughs> that hurts. You brat, you've been too arrogant lately. Ryujiro scolded angrily. You're a violent maniac. Naruto grumbled while holding his head. Pay attention, I'll only show you once. I'll tell you the principles, but whether you can succeed or not depends on your own efforts. Ryujiro said sternly. Raisengan. A blue chakra sphere gathered in Ryujiro's hand. Ryujiro released it towards the ground. With a loud rumble, the ground trembled, and dust covered the surroundings. When the dust cleared, 
Naruto stared wide-eyed at the deep pit on the ground. Wow, such power! Naruto exclaimed in awe. This is the jutsu I'm going to teach you, the Raisingan. The Raisingan is an A-rank ninjutsu. Whether you can learn it or not depends on you. The ninja of the Umbu were in chaos for a moment. Why does that kid know the Raisingan? Could it be Jiraiya-sama? No, I must report this information to Danzo-sama as soon as possible. After the root ninja left, Ryujiro glanced at the previous location of the root ninja. They've already left. He wondered what Danzo's reaction would be. After all, a student who was still in the ninja academy suddenly using an A-rank ninjutsu would be enough to attract the attention of Kanoha's higher-ups. Moreover, Jiraiya hadn't returned to Kanoha for a long time. In their knowledge, only the late fourth Hokage and the legendary Sanin, Jiraiya, who was known as the Toad Sage, could use the Raisingen. Danzo, you've been going too far lately. Hiruzen looked grimly at Danzo in front of him. Hiruzen, you should know that kid is a genius but also a lunatic. Let him join Root. Root is where he belongs. That's impossible. Hiruzen's expression turned extremely ugly. Do you want to burden that child with the darkness of Kanoha at such a young age? It's precisely because he's a genius that Root is the most suitable place for him. Hiruzen, you already had Minato. Do you want this boy too? Danzo didn't continue, but the implication was clear. Hiruzen fell into silence without giving an answer for a moment. Then, after a while, he spoke up, I won't let that child join Root. You'd better give up on that idea. Danzo snorted coldly and left the Hokage's office. Hiruzen returned to his seat, rubbing his forehead. Another genius like Minato. He couldn't let someone like that fall into Danzo's hands. He was getting old, and he wouldn't sit in the position of Hokage for much longer. Moreover, Hiruzen had a bad feeling, as if there was a hidden hand manipulating and influencing the shinobi world. Looking at the documents on his desk, a hint of coldness appeared in Hiruzen's eyes, which had seen many vicissitudes. The Uchiha clan had been getting increasingly restless lately. Since Ryujiro enrolled, Sasuke, who used to shine as the pride of the Uchiha clan, had dimmed considerably in comparison to Ryujiro's radiance. By now, Ryujiro had truly become the undisputed top student, a prominent figure within the academy. However, Ryujiro no longer attended ninja classes. Those at the ninja academy were merely clones of Ryujiro. He had no interest in such a curriculum. And over the past six months, Ryujiro's swordsmanship had improved significantly, but although his progress was steady, he still hadn't reached the level of a true swordsman. It seemed Ryujiro was stuck into a strange cycle of bottlenecks. Character Template Dracul Myhawk Character Unlock Progress 18.5% Though Ryujiro was no longer tormented by the hawk-eyed figure in his mental space, he still was no match for him. Suddenly, at this moment, Ryujiro's eyes changed, his whole body tensing up. He looked alertly at a certain spot. The next moment, as Ryujiro drew his sword, an attack shot out and struck a tree trunk, leaving a mark. This wasn't a flying slash attack. A true swordsman could easily cleave a tree with that technique. Who's there? Hee hee, interesting little guy. Even an average jonin might not be able to detect me. Your power just now didn't seem like chakra. A man with a pale face, black long hair, and an aura of coldness and malice emerged. His eyes were like those of a venomous snake. Ryujiro's eyes couldn't help but contract, an unprecedented sense of danger enveloping him. Orochimaru. How could he appear in Kanoha at this time? The presence of root ninjas had disappeared. It seemed Orochimaru had dealt with them already. And currently, Ryujiro is still no match for Orochimaru. Orochimaru. Ryujiro watched Orochimaru warily, murmuring softly. A hint of curiosity flashed in Orochimaru's eyes as he looked at Ryujiro. It seems you know me. You're one of the legendary Sanin, a renowned rogue ninja in the village. How could I not know you? Ryujiro kept his hand on his sword. Orochimaru was a twisted scientist, he didn't want to fall into Orochimaru's hands. Orochimaru's expression changed, and the next moment, his figure disappeared, appearing in front of Ryujiro. He reached out to grab Ryujiro, but found himself grasping at thin air. Orochimaru once again looked towards Ryujiro. Amazing reaction speed. Orochimaru stretched out his long tongue and licked the blood from his arm. The curious look in his eyes became more intense. He thought, not only did this boy got aware of my movements, but he also had time to do damage to me while avoiding me. This kid. Marvelous. Orochimaru looked even more excited, looking at Ryujiro as if he wanted to swallow him completely. 
Because of this Ryujiro felt unprecedented pressure coming from Orochimaru, cold sweat broke out from his forehead. Damn it. The fight actually turns on this guy. But the next second, Orochimaru's expression changed again. He squinted at another spot in the forest, sensing someone approaching rapidly, and their strength seemed extraordinary. It seems today's encounter ends here. Kid, I'll come find you another day. With those words, Orochimaru's figure also disappeared. After Itachi arrived, he glanced around. Is he gone? Ryujiro was also surprised by Itachi's arrival, understanding now why Orochimaru had left. Why did Itachi come here? Ryujiro didn't think it was the third Hokage who sent Itachi to protect him. Although he had outstanding achievements in the Ninja Academy, Itachi wasn't someone the third Hokage would casually deploy to fight someone like Orochimaru. Who did you just see? Itachi spoke coldly. Orochimaru. Itachi's expression changed slightly. No wonder he had sensed a chilling presence. It indeed matched Orochimaru. He knew this was matter beyond his authority, so he had to inform third Hokage about it. But before that Itachi wanted to talk about something else with Ryujiro. Then, Itachi carefully scrutinized Ryujiro. I heard my brother has been losing to you. Yeah. Ryujiro coughed twice. But at this moment, Itachi had already taken out the shuriken. Damn. Is this the cold Itachi I know? Is he really here to fight me because of Sasuke? Don't misunderstand. Sasuke asked me to test your strength. He wants to know the gap between himself and you. Itachi said indifferently. Ryujiro's face darkened as he cursed inwardly. That bastard Sasuke was clearly setting me up. Even if I'm strong, I'm still just a punching bag in front of Itachi, who had already unlocked the Manjikyu Sharingan and had become a true Kage level powerhouse. But Ryujiro didn't feel even the slightest fear. Instead, he felt excited. Being able to spar with Itachi would help him understand his own strength better. Interesting. He is actually excited. Just as the third Hokage said, this kid is a lunatic. Sasuke, the difference between you and him is that you're not crazy enough. Itachi thought after seeing Ryujiro. It seems you're ready. So, before he could finish his sentence, Itachi's figure had already disappeared. Ryujiro was well aware that it was impossible for him to defeat Itachi head-on with his current strength. The gap between himself and a shinobi of the Kage level was huge, but even so, Ryujiro hoped to unleash his full potential. Even if there was only a slight chance of defeating Itachi, he was unwilling to give up. Two figures intertwined in battle. Clang. Two sparks burst forth, and Itachi's expression turned serious as he looked at the piece of kanai shaved off in his hand. What kind of sword was that? It could even shave off Kanai. Moreover, this kid's swordsmanship had reached a terrifying level. Although it was not enough to pose a threat to him, just from this initial probing, Itachi felt that even a Jonin might not be able to match Ryujiro at the moment. The ground was marked with sketches. Although the incomplete flying slashes did not have the power of an A-rank ninjutsu, it was enough to give Itachi some trouble. Figures darted around. Substitution Jutsu. Body Flicker Jutsu. Shadow Clone Jutsu. While diligently practicing swordsmanship, Ryujiro didn't forget his identity as a shinobi. He had learned most of these jutsu from the scrolls his parents had left in the house. So you've mastered the shadow clone jutsu as well. Truly a genius? Itachi sighed inwardly. The gap between Sasuke and Ryujiro was too great. Was this kid really just a civilian? If Itachi had witnessed Ryujiro's training, perhaps he wouldn't think so. As the figures darted around and the river surged, Influenced by Ryujiro's swordsmanship, a straight-cut mark appeared on the river due to the impact. Not enough. Not enough. Sweat dripped from Ryujiro's forehead. By now, he was soaked through, but facing Itachi's, Ryujiro found himself increasingly enjoying the feeling of this battle. At this moment, it seemed like he had grasped something, and he swung his sword, aim no habakiri, down. Whoosh. A dark red light flashed, and the dazzling flying slash pierced through the sky. A fierce shockwave swept around, and the ground cracked for tens of meters where the flying slash landed. At this moment, Itachi finally felt a sense of crisis. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. Tier. The flying slash was a pure slash, not a ninjutsu formed from chakra, and while the great fireball jutsu was terrifying, it was split in half under the impact of the flying slash. With a rumble, a huge wave surged like a Category 8 hurricane, shaking the surrounding area, and the ground and trees trembled. The moment the slash touched the ground, a deep crater appeared on the ground. Thick smoke covered the surroundings in an instant. 
Itachi, who had escaped using the substitution jutsu, looked at the destruction on the ground in shock, unable to calm down for a long time. What was that just now? Ninjutsu? But the attack just now didn't seem to have chakra properties. If I hadn't dodged, Itachi's gaze towards Ryujiro became more solemn. If he remembered correctly, Ryujiro was only eight years old at the time. Seeing him he remembered Kakashi, who graduated early from the Ninja Academy, only became a Jonin at the age of 12. But to think the strength of this boy was comparable to a Jonin was simply unimaginable, especially the slashing technique that puzzled Itachi. What was the light that flew out? Tuck. Ryujiro gasped for breath, collapsing weakly on the ground. At this point he had completely depleted his strength. He succeeded. In battling with Itachi, a Kaga-level shinobi, he had successfully crossed into the realm of sword mastery and unleashed the flying slash. What a strange guy. Itachi looked at the collapsed Ryujiro on the ground and couldn't help but murmur. The next moment his figure disappeared. Meanwhile after a while someone arrived at the scene, it was Hinata. As Hinata rushed over, seeing Ryujiro collapsed on the ground and the terrifying craters on the ground, she shouted anxiously, ryujiro -kun. Hinata helped Ryujiro up. Looking at Hinata in front of him with exhaustion, Ryujiro still smiled. It's you, Hinata. ryujiro kun are you okay? What happened here? Hinata looked at Ryujiro, whose face was full of exhaustion and dust, feeling extremely distressed, her eyes becoming somewhat moist. Why are you crying? I'm fine. I just had a fight with someone and got a bit tired. Hinata, could you please help me get up? Hinata wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes and softly replied, Yes. With Hinata's support, Ryujiro walked out of the woods step by step, and their bond quickly warmed as a result. What? You're saying that Ryujiro's strength is already comparable to that of a jonin? Hiruzen exclaimed in shock, his eyes revealing astonishment. Itachi nodded. Ha! Huh. Hiruzen took a deep breath, finding it hard to calm down internally. Eight years old. Ryujiro was only eight years old. Kakashi didn't become a jonin until he was twelve, although becoming a jonin and reaching the strength of a jonin were different matters. But having jonin level strength at the age of seven was unheard of. At this moment, Danzo entered the room. Hiruzen, leave Ryujiro to me. I will definitely nurture him into the most outstanding shinobi. Hiruzen looked at Danzo coldly. I won't hand him over to you and let him become a ruthless killing machine, Danzo. Don't even think about it, Danzo. I won't let that happen. Hiruzen's tone was firm. Why don't you understand, Sarubi? Enough. Hiruzen rebuked. My decision will be final after all. I am the Hokage. Danzo looked at Hiruzen with a grim expression, then left the Hokage's office. Itachi, who had remained silent on the side, had nothing to do with the affair between the Hokage and Danzo, but he did have something to report to Hiruzen. Hokage-sama, recently there has been increasing dissatisfaction within the clan. Father also spoke to me about it yesterday. Itachi spoke slowly. Listening to Itachi's words, Hiruzen felt even more headache. One thing after another. Couldn't that guy Danzo be a bit more peaceful? Right now, the matter concerning the Uchiha clan was more important. Itachi, I leave the Uchiha clan's matter to you. With Shursui gone, you are the only one who can persuade the Uchiha clan. Hiruzen emphasized. Hokusama, I will do my best. Good. After saying that, Hiruzen watched Itachi's departing figure, sinking back into deep thought. Add in, a little info about armament hockey, here in fight people would be able to see armament hockey, it makes it easier to describe fight scenes. Stepping into the new level, Ryujiro received two rewards. They were the observation hockey and armament hockey. My hawk had once said that any sword in the world could become a black blade as long as armament hockey was used with it, creating black slashes. Although Ryujiro had stepped into the realm of sword mastery, he was only a beginner swordsman. Becoming a true master swordsman was impossible for the time being. It would be better to focus on mastering armament and observation hockey for now. By focusing on hockey training, once Ryujiro mastered observation hockey, his perception would surpass that of Leaf Village's sensory ninja. The semester at the ninja school had ended. At this moment, Ryujiro, Naruto, and Hinata had become inseparable companions. Naruto now seemed very interested in Sakura, but he was no longer a loser. Sakura wasn't worthy of him. Hinata, Naruto, shall we have a spar? Ryujiro suggested. Do you mean a real fight? Naruto asked eagerly. Yeah. Ryujiro nodded. Naruto clenched his fists excitedly. Great. I've been wanting to spar with you for a long time. 
I'm sure my strength is not weaker than yours, now. Ryujiro glanced at Naruto somewhat helplessly. What gave you the courage to say such things? Naruto had indeed made great progress and could now compete evenly with Sasuke in tests. The Uchiha clan genius, since being defeated by Ryujiro, had been dealt another blow by Naruto, shattering his young heart. Now even Sasuke doubted whether he was truly a genius. Even Niji now acknowledged Hinata's strength. In their recent sparring match, Niji was no match for Hinata at all. After a moment of hesitation, Niji said to Hinata, Hinata-sama, from now onwards, I will fight with your boyfriend, he is the person I want to defeat the most. Hinata's face turned red, and she shyly lowered her head. Boyfriend, this is too embarrassing, she murmured. All right Naruto, listen to me. What I meant by spar is you two against me. Huh. Both Naruto and Hinata were stunned. Ryujiro, you're underestimating us. If Hinata and I teamed up against you, it would be difficult for you to handle us, Naruto argued. Ryujiro, isn't this a bit too much? Hinata added. Ryujiro shook his head. His strength was now almost on par with a jonin. While Naruto and Hinata were skilled, they still lacked something compared to him. It's fine. Just go all out but be cautious, Ryujiro said. He unsheathed his sword, aim no habakiri. To spar with Naruto and Hinata, he needed to be careful not to hurt them, so he decided to use the back of the blade. Now that Ryujiro is serious, I won't hold back. Naruto exclaimed excitedly and charged forward. Wow, that's heavy. Naruto's expression changed as the sword clashed with his kanai, creating sparks. Hinata, who had been hesitating, became determined and rushed towards Ryujiro. Clang! Clang! Ryujiro flicked his sword, and Naruto's kanai flew out of his hand. Ryujiro is a monster. His strength is incredible. His strength was simply monstrous. Hinata, let's get serious, Naruto said, panting. In that case, I'll put in more effort too. Hinata began her assault, and Ryujiro decided to match her intensity. Two palms, four palms, eight palms, sixteen palms. Accompanied by strong gusts of wind, waves of force swept through the area. But Hinata's expression changed more and more. It felt like she was pushing against a mountain. Why is this happening? It seemed like Ryujiro knew exactly where her attacks were going. Every time she struck, he could anticipate her moves. Meanwhile, Naruto had produced several shuriken and hurled them at Ryujiro. Clang! 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 Ryujiro swung his sword, deflecting the shuriken with sparks flying. Naruto, Hinata, be careful! Ryujiro warned as armament Haki coated his blade, turning his sword into a black color shimmering with an eerie light. With a swing of his sword, boom! A terrifying black slash soared forth, affecting the surrounding terrain. As the slash spread, everything around was engulfed in darkness, turning into dust. A terrible sword mark appeared straight ahead. What's that? Naruto exclaimed in horror. The unmatched might was terrifying, like a fierce beast charging, instilling unprecedented fear. Faced with such terrifying power, Naruto couldn't even stand up. The slash swept towards Naruto and Hinata, and they could only dodge, unable to confront it. However, while dodging, Naruto and Hinata gave Ryujiro an opportunity. Ryujiro appeared in front of them. Naruto was sent flying, while Hinata's neck was merely pressed against by the scabbard. Naruto crawled out of the bushes in a sorry state, yelling, Ryujiro, you're too biased. Why did you only kick me? This is for your own growth, Ryujiro replied calmly. Naruto felt like saying something inappropriate, but all he managed was, What growth? You just don't want to hurt Hinata, Ryujiro Kuen. Hinata, being embraced by Ryujiro, murmured shyly. But Ryujiro hugged her tighter, making her face turn red. Naruto turned away, avoiding the scene. After a while, the atmosphere gradually eased, and Naruto asked, Ryujiro, what was that dark slash earlier? That power was even more terrifying than an A-rank ninjutsu. Naruto pointed to the ground markings and the flattened trees. It was like someone had slashed the ground. That was my sword slash. Slash? What's that? Is it a ninjutsu? But I didn't sense any chakra in that attack. As Ryujiro was about to explain, he suddenly remembered that a slash was not a power recognized by ninjas of this world. Even if he explained it, Naruto might not understand with his intelligence. Forget it, you wouldn't understand even if I told you. Naruto immediately became unhappy. What do you mean, Ryujiro? Do you think I'm that dumb? Yes, Ryujiro said mercilessly. Naruto, Unable to win the argument and feeling frustrated, 
Naruto could only sulk on his own. Time passed quickly, and before they knew it, it was almost time to return to school. Meanwhile, at the Hyuga household, Hayashi calmly sipped his tea while casting a faint glance at Ryujiro seated across from him. Outside the door, Hinata was feeling restless and anxious. She had suddenly received news that her father wanted to see Ryujiro. Could it be because of their frequent interactions? Don't worry, sister. Father won't make things difficult for your boyfriend, reassured the petite and lovely Hinabi. Hinata blushed shyly at her sister's words, her face turning red. Don't talk nonsense, Hinabi. Me and Ryujiro. Hinata's voice trailed off, growing quieter as she spoke. Hinabi knew her sister's personality well. Though Hinata used to be timid, she had changed significantly since meeting Ryujiro. In this world as women mature early. Even though Hanabi was aware of Hinata's relationship with Ryujiro, she didn't say much about it. It's because of you that my daughter has changed so much, Hayashi said with a hint of severity in his eyes, exerting the aura of a high-ranking ninja. However, even facing such a high-ranking ninja, Ryujiro was confident enough to believe he could defeat Hayashi. So, when talking to him, Ryujiro remained unchanged. She chose to change herself, not because of me, Ryujiro said calmly, meeting Hayashi's gaze. A hint of surprise flashed in Hayashi's eyes, as he began to regard Ryujiro with even more respect. Could a kid have such composure and attitude? He had witnessed Hinata's personality changing day by day, and he had once considered giving up on her. Before meeting Ryujiro, Hinata couldn't even defeat her sister Hinabi, let alone Niji. If it weren't for Niji being from a branch family, Hayashi would have considered focusing more on his training. But as time passed, Hayashi noticed a change in his daughter. She became stronger, shedding her previous weakness visibly. Almost every day, Hayashi watched Hinata train diligently in the family dojo, and her strength grew rapidly. During a real battle with Niji, he witnessed Hinata completely overpowering him, leaving him defenseless. This made Hayashi curious. What had caused such a huge change in his once timid daughter? Upon investigation, Hayashi discovered that his daughter had been in close contact with a civilian student at school, and what surprised him even more was that this civilian student turned out to be a prodigy. He had defeated Sasuke and even Niji. When he learned that Ryujiro's strength was already comparable to that of a jonin, Hayashi was stunned for a long time before regaining his composure. A jonin at the age of eight, a genius even surpassing Kakashi? And Ryujiro's specialty was not ninjutsu but swordsmanship. Was Kanoha about to produce another figure like Kakashi's father? After careful consideration, Hayashi wanted to meet this extraordinary young man. Upon seeing Ryujiro for the first time, Hayashi couldn't help but feel that he was unusually mature. After conversing for about half an hour, Hayashi looked at Ryujiro seriously and said, I don't oppose you being with Hinata, but take care of her, because she is my daughter. Ryujiro lowered his eyes and sipped his tea, his dark green eyes exuding allure. As long as I'm here, Hinata won't suffer any harm, Ryujiro said earnestly, putting Hayashi's mind at ease. As the door opened, Hinata and Hanabi, who had been eavesdropping, lost their balance and fell to the ground. Especially Hinata, when she looked up at the tall figure of Ryujiro, blushed deeply. The embarrassed Hinata hurriedly ran back to her room. Well, then I'll take my leave, Hyugasama. Mm. Watching Ryujiro's figure recede, Hayashi couldn't help but sigh. Having the strength of Jonin at the age of eight, did the third Hokage want to groom this kid to be the Hokage? However, Ryujiro had no interest in becoming Hokage. He just wanted to become stronger, continuously stronger. What's the use of being Hokage? During the Fourth Great Ninja War, the so-called Hokage were powerless against Achiha Madura, let alone the other members of the Akatsuki. And in the later battles against Kagaya Atsutsuki, they seemed insignificant. Moreover, Ryujiro didn't feel any sense of belonging to Kanoha itself. If Kanoha's dark hands reached out to him, he wouldn't care about the village. Even if he became a rough ninja, so what? Only strength mattered. Right now, the primary goal was to raise the progress of the Myhawk template to 100% and unlock the second character template. Even in his prime, Myhawk's strength was at most comparable to a high-level Kage. But if he wanted to confront monsters like Atsutsuki, he was still weak. Before unlocking the second template, if he had the chance to meet Jiraiya, he would ask him about Sage Mode and Senjutsu Chakra. With Sage Mode, even without unlocking his second template, his strength could be greatly increased. Right now, he was only at the beginning of his journey, and those monstrous beings were unlikely to appear. The Kages are still an absolute powerhouse at this stage. 
Ryujiro's figure appeared on the village road, and at that moment, a voice called out to him. With his trademark short sleeves and unique black spiky hair, it's Sasuke. A smile appeared on Ryujiro's face, but he also felt a little surprised. Is what my brother said true? Has your strength really reached the level of Jonin? Sasuke looked at Ryujiro with unwillingness in his eyes, feeling a bit bitter. As a member of the Uchiha clan, he was proud of his identity. The Uchiha clan had produced many geniuses, Uchiha Mura, Uchiha Shursui, his brother, and before Ryujiro entered school, he was also a genius of the Uchiha clan. But since Ryujiro entered school, his brilliance as a genius had been gradually overshadowed. After losing to Ryujiro, Sasuke's pride suffered an unprecedented blow. Well, perhaps I was no match for Itachi last time, but now I have the power to fight him, Ryujiro said calmly, causing Sasuke's eyes to shrink suddenly. How is that possible? Ryujiro was only seven years old. And compared to Ryujiro, Sasuke was still weaker than him in every aspect. Ryujiro, fight with me, Sasuke said. Why? Ryujiro asked. I want to know the difference between us, Sasuke replied. Ryujiro sighed helplessly. Sasuke was clearly looking for trouble. Ryujiro led Sasuke to the forest where he often trained. Why is this place like this? Sasuke asked, looking at the deep crater ground and the dense forest cut by sharp weapons, his face filled with shock. Look, Sasuke, Ryujiro said. This is the difference between you and me. With that, Ryujiro drew his sword and struck a simple yet powerful slash. Sasuke hadn't even realized what was happening. A dazzling dark red sword aura, like a tsunami engulfing everything, swept through, overturning everything in its path. Boom! The sword aura surged, overwhelming everything in its path. The terrifying force shattered the earth. The endless land trembled because of this dark red sword aura, and the vibrations in the forest startled countless birds. The terrifying force submerged everything, leaving behind a deep trench ten of meters deep on the ground, like a torn wound. As the dust settled and the mist dispersed, Sasuke widened his eyes in horror, staring at the split ground before him. Sasuke was completely stunned. Do you understand now? This is the difference of strength between you and me. There's no need for a fight, Ryujiro said calmly. I have things to attend to. Goodbye. With a farewell, Ryujiro left Sasuke, who was still bewildered. Sasuke collapsed to the ground, trembling uncontrollably. Is this a joke? How could he have such power? Is that ninjutsu? Thrink or a shrink? The gap between him and me is so huge. Can I ever catch up to him? Clutching his fists in frustration, Sasuke couldn't accept always lagging behind Ryujiro. But when he saw the deep carvings on the ground, he felt even more hopeless and powerless. The gap was too enormous. In the following days at the Ninja Academy, Ryujiro continued to send his shadow clones to attend classes. Each clone alone was strong enough to compete with low-level Jonin. The difference in strength was only because the clones didn't have a sword. If the shadow clones also wielded swords, they might even be able to take on Jonin. Character Template Dracul Myhawk Character Unlock Progress 35.5% Now Ryujiro had successfully mastered the essence of the swordsman. Although his armament hockey and observation hockey had not yet reached their peak, his armament hockey was enough to cover his upper body. Training hockey was simple, Ryujiro pushed it to its limits time and time again, constantly surpassing himself. Only by doing so could he rapidly improve his hockey. In his mental space, My Hawk had transformed into his version. He wore a black tricorn hat adorned with white fur and a wine-red patterned shirt. A small cross-shaped knife hung from his chest, and Ryujiro vividly remembered My Hawk's quirky expression when he took out the knife. The strongest swordsman in the world. In his mental space, Ryujiro felt a heavy pressure. Indeed, the pressure of being the strongest swordsman was like a mountain pressing down on him. However, Ryujiro had an idea, one he had never considered before. Could his mental self use ninjutsu and shadow clone jutsu? Ryujiro had never attempted such a thing before. It seemed that chakra still existed. Let's give it a try. Ryujiro formed hand seals. Boom! Another figure appeared beside him, and Ryujiro's expression changed. Just creating a shadow clone hugely depleted his chakra, showing that there were still limitations in the mental space. But even creating one shadow clone was enough. Strongest swordsman. Let me test my skills. Clang. My hawk's sharp eyes showed no emotion. Accompanied by a sword cry, a green sword aura, dozens of meters high, swept towards Ryujiro like a fierce storm. Damn. Feeling the intense danger, 
Ryujiro knew that the gap between him and my hawk of this era was huge. Ryujiro dodged the green sword aura, while his shadow clones searched for an opportunity. Seizing the moment when my hawk was vulnerable, a red-black sword aura surged forth. Clang! With a casual raise of his hand, my hawk easily deflected the sword aura from Ryujiro's shadow clone, causing it to explode above them. In the Hyuga family's dojo, Hayashi watched as Ryujiro, holding his sword, emitted a terrifying aura. What on earth is this kid doing? He's just standing there with his eyes closed holding a sword, but why does his aura fluctuate like that? Especially at that moment, Hayashi even felt a sense of threat. Father, Hinata called out, then looked at Ryujiro and said, Ryujiro is training again. Training? Is this what he does for training? Hayashi couldn't help but ask in confusion. Yes, father. Ryujiro's training has always been like this. Besides sparring with us, he spends more time contemplating swordsmanship in his own world. Isn't this meditation? Hinata shook her head. I used to think so too, but every time Ryujiro enters this state, his strength increases significantly. This is a secret of Ryujiro's strength. A secret? Hayashi furrowed his brow in contemplation. Could there be a bloodline limit that helps in his training? But Ryujiro is just a commoner. His parents, both Jonin, had no such bloodlines. This kid is indeed extraordinary. Will his swordsmanship bring about a new white fang that will terrify other ninja villages? In the mental space, Ryujiro only saw a flash of sword light, and he returned from the mental space to reality. Ryujiro gasped for breath, sweat covering his forehead as he knelt on one knee. Was his stamina depleted to such an extent? Hayashi was surprised. Indeed, as Hinata had said, meditation definitely wouldn't cause Ryujiro's chakra to plummet so suddenly. And he looked so exhausted. Truly the world's greatest swordsman. Even though Ryujiro used the same techniques, he could still be easily countered by Maihawk. Ryujiro wasn't just learning Maihawk's techniques without purpose. He also combined ninjutsu to create new sword techniques. The power of the strongest swordsman's sword aura was dozens of times stronger than his own. Just one strike was equivalent, no more than the power of an S-rank ninjutsu, which was thrilling to think about. The day before the start of school, Ryujiro woke up to sudden news the next morning. That news was about Naruto stealing the Scroll of Seals. This made Ryujiro somewhat silent. Has history not been altered? Or was there a force manipulating this world, perhaps him? The Sage of Six Paths. The legendary ancestor of ninjas, the founder of Ninshu. Although the Sage of Six Paths no longer walked the earth, he continued to watch over the ninja world from the afterlife. As a legendary figure, Ryujiro didn't want to draw the attention of this old geezer. After all, his own strength was limited now. Even if he fully unlocked the Template of Maihawk, his strength couldn't compare to Hagoromo. Just his planetary devastation was enough to give Ryujiro a headache. At this moment, Ryujiro had arrived at Naruto's doorstep. He knocked. Naruto, still groggy from sleep, opened the door and was momentarily stunned by Ryujiro's presence. Ryujiro, what brings you here? Naruto asked in surprise. Ryujiro swiftly entered Naruto's room, followed by a series of Naruto's pained cries echoing from inside. After a while, Naruto had three large bumps on his head. He covered his head and yelled indignantly, Ryujiro, why did you hit me? Why did you steal the scroll? Naruto's expression instantly stiffened, then he awkwardly chuckled. Ryujiro, how did you know? Ryujiro looked at Naruto with a knowing gaze. All right, stop pretending and just be honest. I just heard from Mizuki-sensei that the scroll of sealing contains many interesting ninjutsu, so I wanted to take a look. And then, then Mizuki-sensei suddenly tried to ambush me. After I gave him a beating, Iruka-sensei came and took me to see the Hokage, and then I came back. So, it was Mizuki after all. But this plot did undergo some changes. Mizuki got beaten by Naruto, and Iruka didn't suffer any fatal injuries. Though the alterations were minor, they still affected the original storyline. Show me what you've learned, Ryujiro said casually. Naruto became flustered and widened his eyes in shock. Whoa, Ryujiro, you even know about that? Multiple shadow clone jutsu. Bam bam bam. The room suddenly filled with many Naruto clones. Naruto's house was already small, and with so many clones gathering, it became even more crowded. Indeed, multiple shadow clone jutsu. Ryujiro wasn't surprised. In fact, he found it quite normal. But, hey, stop pushing me. You're the one pushing me. It's you. It's you. It's you. Naruto's clones started arguing, and the room instantly became noisy. 
People outside heard and thought Naruto was up to something in the house. After dispelling the clones, Naruto wiped the sweat off his forehead. Do you want me to teach you this jutsu? Naruto smirked temptingly. No need. I'm not interested. Multiple shadow clone jutsu consumed too much chakra, and it could even drain one's chakra reserves in an instant because of the enormous amount required. That's why it was classified as a forbidden jutsu. Only someone like Naruto, who was an Uzumaki and has access to Ninetales chakra, could use it without hesitation. Naruto's face stiffened. He thought he could tempt Ryujiro with forbidden techniques, but who would have thought Ryujiro wasn't interested at all? Ryujiro. But this is a forbidden jutsu. A forbidden jutsu. Oh, so what? Isn't a forbidden jutsu powerful? I can now finally beat you. Naruto. Can't have any fun anymore. Naruto, disheartened, lowered his head and, like Sasuke the day before, fell into silence, a sign of disappointment. Truly they were good buddies. The relationship between Naruto and Sasuke was still good, although they sometimes bickered due to the competitive nature, typical of children their age. These two sets of good buddies had a pretty good relationship now. In the subsequent school life, Ryujiro continued to send shadow clones to school, and only during major exams would his real self appear. As for Hinata, due to her family reasons, even though she could use shadow clones now, she still went to school in person. And so, time passed. At the edge of a cliff, Ryujiro, now towering at 1.77 meters, 5 feet 8 inches, stood. In the eyes of his peers, Ryujiro seemed like a giant. Hinata and Naruto stayed far away because that's what Ryujiro instructed them to do. What are you doing, Ryujiro? Naruto asked, puzzled. In the next moment, Hinata suddenly widened her eyes and looked at Ryujiro. In an instant, her eyes contracted sharply. That momentum! Ryujiro's sword exuded a flying aura, and his dark green eyes gleamed with a divine light. Armament hockey! Black blade! Flush! Clang! A sharp sword sound was heard as a massive black slash soared into the sky, reaching a height of 17 or 18 meters. In the air, even the white clouds parted as the black slash split them in two. A storm erupted, overturning everything around. Boom! Underneath the black slash, not far away, a mountain peak was severed right before Hinata and Naruto's eyes. The mountain crumbled, shrouding everything in a cloud of dust, even attracting the attention of the third Hokage in the village. At this moment, the Uchiha clan, Umbu, and Root all rushed toward the sliced-off mountain peak. The mountain, the mountain was destroyed by Ryujiro. Oh my god! Is Ryujiro a monster? Can the third Hokage really slice a mountain peak? Even Naruto began to doubt if the Hokage of the village could beat Ryujiro. Hinata, at this moment, was shocked speechless, unable to calm her heart for a long time. Frank, that slash. It's the power of an S-rank ninjutsu. Oh. Even an S-rank ninjutsu couldn't slice a mountain peak. Just how terrifying is Ryujiro's strength? Phew. Ryujiro exhaled heavily, and the sharp edge in his eyes gradually faded away. A year ago, Ryujiro had already stepped into the realm of the Great Swordsman, but within that year, he still wasn't a match for Myhawk in his mental world. Because Myhawk in his mental world belonged to his peak. Even though Ryujiro had stepped into the realm of the Great Swordsman, he still wasn't Myhawk's match. Character Template Dracul Myhawk Character Unlock Progress 73.3% Though Ryujiro would still eventually lose to Myhawk, it wouldn't be as disastrous as before. And now, what he severed was just a small mountain peak, while Myhawk's slash could effortlessly split a large mountain peak in two. There was still a gap between him and Myhawk. As the dust settled from the sky, the faces of the arriving shinobi all showed expressions of utter disbelief. What what happened here? Hey hey hey! Am I dreaming? The mountain! It's been severed! Shinobi from Umbu Root, as well as the Kanoha police force, all stood in shock as they gazed at the severed peak. The smooth cut resembled that of a blade slicing through butter. Such a sight was unprecedented in their lives. What kind of power could sever a mountain like this? In their understanding, only the tailed beasts and the legendary first Hokage possessed such power. Even the third Hokage in his prime probably couldn't cause such massive destruction. What's going on here? Danzo rushed over, his pupils contracting at the sight of the broken mountain. Danzo-sama, we arrived here to find it already like this? Such power! It's likely an S-rank ninjutsu. S-rank ninjutsu? The hearts of all the shinobi present sank. They were well aware of the power of S-rank ninjutsu, capable of massive destruction unparalleled before. 
But could an S-rank ninjutsu truly sever a mountain? Danzo's expression darkened considerably. Gazing at the severed mountain filled his with an unprecedented sense of crisis. Who could have done this? Was it someone from Kanoa? Or had someone infiltrated their village? Conduct thorough checks on everyone entering and leaving Kanoa. Don't let a single person slip through unnoticed. If anything unusual is found, notify me and the third Hokage immediately. Yes. With one last glance at the horrifying scene before him, Danzo left, his heart still racing. After Ryujiro and his companions returned to the village, discussions about the severed mountain filled the air. Even Hinata and Naruto couldn't calm their hearts. The gap with Ryujiro is so vast. How did Ryujiro train? Naruto clenched his fists, feeling low. He had thought that mastering the Shadow Clone Jutsu would allow him to keep up with Ryujiro, but after two years, Naruto felt the gap between them was like a chasm. Especially the strike that severed the mountain, it made Naruto keenly feel the difference between them. Ryujiro, I'm going to train. With those words, Naruto disappeared from Ryujiro's sight. It seems Naruto was affected. Hinata murmured. Ryujiro then took Hinata's delicate hand and smiled. If he follows my training method, after some time he will also become stronger. But now he's gone, so no one will disturb us. Hinata blushed and lowered her head instinctively. Ryujiro had become even more charming than before. With his short black hair and his dark green eyes, he naturally drew people's attention. Ryujiro was wearing a black shirt and tan baggy training pants with a black belt weaved through the waist that was custom made for him. With his height reaching 1.77 meters and his mature demeanor he seemed like a young adult. A few months later, something unprecedented and terrifying happened in Kanoha. The Uchiha clan was exterminated. Once a prestigious clan in Kanoha, the Uchiha had produced many outstanding individuals. But overnight, they were wiped out, leaving people feeling a mix of emotions. What shocked the people of Kanoha even more was that the culprit turned out to be Itachi Uchiha, the son of the Uchiha clan leader, the once brilliant prodigy, just like Uchiha Shursui. Now, only Sasuke, the last of the Uchiha clan, remained in Kanoha. Some lamented, while others gloated. There were plenty in the village who had harbored ill feelings toward the Uchiha. Since the Uchiha massacre, Sasuke's personality had undergone a drastic change. He became aloof and arrogant, refusing to speak to anyone. His two fangirls, Ino and Sakura, felt sorry for Sasuke, but whenever they tried to comfort him, they were met with his cold gaze. Valley of the End Ryujiro looked at the desolate figure before him and said, Contacting me at a time like this, aren't you afraid I'll take you back to the village? Itachi turned around, his Mengekyo Sharingan locking onto Ryujiro. Sasuke, is he okay? Ryujiro chuckled. Do you think he could be okay facing this situation? Now he only wants to get stronger to kill you. Itachi lowered his head, sighing. As long as his power exceeds his hatred for me, that's enough. Between the village and the clan, you ultimately chose the village. Ryujiro said casually. Itachi stared at Ryujiro, disbelief written all over his face. You know, Ryujiro did not answer. There were very few things in the village that Ryujiro didn't know about, his knowledge even extended to the dealings between Danzo and Orochimaru behind the scenes. Tell me, you didn't just bring me here for Sasuke, did you? Itachi looked at Ryujiro, scrutinizing him carefully. Is this boy really so young? The feeling Ryujiro gave him now was different. He sensed a threat emanating from Ryujiro. Itachi was well aware of his own strength. Even the current third Hokage might not be his match, yet he could feel a threat from Ryujiro. It seems, I can't figure you out. There are many in the village who can't figure me out. You're not the only one. Itachi drew out a kunai, his Mangekyo Sharingan fixed on Ryujiro, and said indifferently. This is the only thing I wanted to know before leaving the village. Let me see how much your strength has grown. Heh, I also want to see how strong I am now. Ryujiro drew his sword, hockey coating his hand and blade. Seeing the black substance on Ryujiro's hand, Itachi furrowed his brow. What is this? Regular ninjutsu? Or a Kekiai Genkai? Itachi once suspected whether Ryujiro had a Kekiai Genkai. Otherwise, how could a civilian grow to this extent? Was this black substance what he speculated to be the Kekiai Genkai? Ryujiro probably didn't expect that Itachi would mistake Haki for a Kekiai Genkai. What are you doing? Itachi looked at Ryujiro, puzzled as he closed his eyes. The Uchiha are most famous for their Sharingan. If I don't make eye contact with you, your Sharingan Genjutsu shouldn't work. Ryujiro's words were correct, but could he unleash his full power with his eyes closed? In the blink of an eye, 
The voices of the two disappeared as if they had vanished. Asterisk clang. Asterisk the collision between kunai and sword erupted into dazzling sparks. Ryujiro was no longer the same as before. The black kunai was sliced in half by the sharp blade of Ryujiro's sword. Itachi retreated several steps in shock, staring at Ryujiro in astonishment. Itachi, don't underestimate me. Otherwise, you'll die. And there was some mistake in timeline by me, so MC isn't really 9, I will correct that in Chunin exam arc as in that arc I would be able to get proper age of every main character in Naruto, so just bear with me. And there might be some small inconsistency here and there, as it has been too long since I watched Naruto, but these small errors won't matter that much in the story. I will try to fix them if possible. Itachi's eyes contracted, and a few more shurikens appeared in his hand. The moment they were thrown, Itachi quickly formed seals. Fire style. Phoenix fire jutsu. From Itachi's mouth, several fireballs were continuously spewed out, the scorching heat causing the surrounding temperature to rise. But under Ryujiro's observation hockey, he had already anticipated what Itachi would do. Clang. 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 All the shurikens were deflected. Ryujiro's sword blocked the attack from Itachi behind him. Once again, the kunai broke into two pieces. Even with your eyes closed, you can sense my location. Such a terrifying perception. Itachi's expression became unusually serious. The combat experience and mature mindset displayed by the young man in front of him were not something that could be possessed at his age. In the next moment, a fierce aura emanated from Ryujiro. Instantly, Itachi felt a sense of threat and quickly distanced himself from Ryujiro. Yet even so, Ryujiro's figure seemed to disappear, and the next moment he appeared in front of Itachi. In an instant he drew his sword, black blade, flash, zing. At the moment the blade flashed, an extremely dazzling light deprived Itachi Uchiha of his sight. Boom. Behind Itachi, the continuous spread of the slash extended for 40 to 50 meters, like a monstrous beast destroying everything underfoot. The ground cracked and trembled uncontrollably. In the instant of the slash's spread, it exploded with a thunderous roar. The shockwave rushed forth, like a hurricane, snapping trees and covering the sky with dust. Under the slash, the scattered stones turned into nothingness. Itachi stiffly turned his head, his face filled with horror as he looked at the abyss behind him. The two statues of the Valley of the End also showed cracks. Gulp. Itachi couldn't help but swallow hard, staring at Ryujiro in horror. This is your strength? At this moment, Ryujiro had already sheathed his sword. If he hadn't held back in that moment of vulnerability, Itachi might have died under his sword. However, Ryujiro didn't do that because there was no killing intent from Itachi, it was just an ordinary confrontation. Yeah. Ryujiro opened his eyes, his gaze fixed on Itachi. How many times can you perform such a slash? Itachi looked gravely at Ryujiro. Ryujiro glanced at Itachi indifferently and said calmly, this is just an ordinary slash. Such a power can be used effortlessly. Itachi stood still for a long time, dumbfounded. As a cold and aloof figure in this world, Itachi was as stunned as a log. Such a slash, comparable to an S-rank ninjutsu, could be unleashed, casually. Is what he said true or false? Regardless of its truth, Ryujiro at such a young age already possessed the strength of a Akira. Thinking of this, Itachi could no longer remain calm. If this news spread throughout the entire ninja world, it would likely cause a sensation. Such swordsmanship was already more terrifying than the former White Fang. If a casual strike is an S-rank ninjutsu, who in this ninja world could threaten Ryujiro? Did we make too much noise? It seems someone is coming. Ryujiro's observation Haki sensed several auras rapidly approaching. Perhaps because of the commotion caused by the previous slash, it attracted the attention of the Kanoha village ninjas. Itachi furrowed his brow. He didn't detect any ninjas within his sensing range. No matter how skilled the Kanoha village's sensing department was, they probably couldn't match up to Ryujiro's perception. If possible, I hope you can take care of Sasuke for me. Itachi's words echoed faintly in the valley. Ryujiro clicked his tongue and then turned his head, casting a serious glance at another location. Just now, that place. Was it a Beedo? Troublesome. If that guy sets his sights on them, it won't be good. Just as Ryujiro turned around, several voices suddenly appeared in front of him. Kakashi Hataki, Asuma Saritobi, my guy. My guy looked at the changes in the landscape not far away and exclaimed in shock, What happened here? This situation seems similar to when that mountain peak was cut off in Kanoha. Has the terrain been altered? 
Seeing the cracks extending tens of meters deep, the three Jonin fell into contemplation, then unconsciously shifted their gaze to Ryujiro. This kid looks familiar. Oh, I remember now, speaking of which, Kakashi, this guy is hailed as a genius who can rival you. His swordsmanship is said to be as exquisite as Sakumo-sensei. Did Sakumo-san secretly have another kid behind your back? Asuma teased with a wicked smile. Asuma. Asuma noticed Kakashi's unfriendly gaze and quickly shut his mouth, not saying another word. In terms of strength, he was no match for Kakashi. After all, Kakashi's reputation as the copy ninja had already spread to the other four major ninja villages. Kakashi's dark expression gradually softened, and then he carefully scrutinized Ryujiro in front of him. This young man was not simple, his unique aura and the sword at his waist completely concealed his sharpness. Even if they had never met before, Kakashi could feel the extraordinary nature of the young man in front of him. Young man, do you know what just happened here? Mike Guy grinned and asked. Facing the three Jonin, Ryujiro's expression remained unchanged, but his gaze lingered on Kakashi for a long time. So this was the legendary Kakashi Hataki. Regardless of who his opponent was, it seemed like he always had an equal chance of winning, like he had some plot armor. You say Kakashi is strong, right? He wasn't particularly strong, just slightly stronger than an elite Jonin. With the use of Kamui, Kakashi's strength might already be close to that of Akiya. But during the pain invasion, Kakashi and the six paths of pain could fight evenly, or even might have a slight advantage. Then there were later fights with Madara Achiha, Kagaya Atsutsuki, his strength increased according to the opponent's strength. Kakashi felt Ryujiro's gaze and expression becoming somewhat unnatural. Ryujiro, what exactly happened here? Don't be afraid, even if that person comes again, the three of us have the power to fight him. Asuma thought Ryujiro might have been scared by something that happened earlier, so he comforted him. Ryujiro couldn't be bothered to even look at him, calmly saying, Itachi Achiha was here. The expressions of the three individuals suddenly changed. Itachi Achiha. They all wore solemn expressions as they gazed at the devastated surrounding and the narrow mountain peaks, a hint of dread creeping into their eyes. It's Achiha Itachi. That explains it, but when did he master such terrifying ninjutsu? Such power rivals even S-rank jutsu. It's swordsmanship. Achiha Itachi, the mastermind behind the Achiha clan massacre, a wanted S-rank missing nin by the village. None of them understood why Itachi would slaughter his own clan but in their minds, he was an extremely dangerous individual. Only the third Hokage and Danzo knew about Itachi's relationship with the higher-ups in Kanoha. Asuma, report the situation here to the third Hokage. Guy, scout the surroundings for any other presence. I'll take this kid, Ryujiro, back to the village. Kakashi said earnestly. Asuma and Guy had no objections. Guy was responsible for scouting for any other enemies nearby, while Asuma was already on his way to meet the third Hokage. As Kakashi and Ryujiro walked, they remained silent. The atmosphere was tense, but after glancing at the sword hanging from Ryujiro's waist, Kakashi spoke up. Was that commotion caused by Itachi? Kakashi had always been wary of the kid beside him. Perhaps Asuma and Guy couldn't sense it, but Kakashi, a veteran of the Third Great Ninja War, felt a sense of danger emanating from the boy. It wasn't often that an elite jonin felt threatened. Kakashi-san, if I told you that the commotion was caused by me, would you believe it? Ryujiro flashed a mischievous smile at Kakashi, and in the next moment, his figure disappeared from Kakashi's sight. Kakashi stood frozen in shock. That terrain-altering ninjutsu was because of Ryujiro? Itachi was a dangerous individual. If Ryujiro had truly encountered him, there was no way he would come out and scathe. The only explanation was that this kid harbored some undisclosed secrets. And if Itachi indeed possessed such terrifying ninjutsu, the village would have some knowledge of it, even if limited. They couldn't be completely clueless. The split mountain peak, the cracks spreading hundreds of meters across the ground, these were the work of this kid. It was hard for Kakashi to believe at first. Was it swordsmanship? Whether it was the previously severed mountain peak or the cracks he had just witnessed, they resembled the work of a blade, leaving behind similar traces. Even his father, as skilled as he was in swordsmanship, probably couldn't wield such terrifying power. What secrets did this kid conceal? In the Hokage's office, Hiruzen frowned at Kakashi. Kakashi, are you saying that all the previous disturbances were caused by Ryujiro? Ryujiro hasn't even reached in full potential right now and even S-rank ninjutsu might not be capable of the environmental changes we've witnessed. 
Are you sure about this? Facing the third Hokage's questioning, Kakashi was momentarily speechless because he lacked direct evidence to prove that all those destruction were caused by Ryujiro. But combining Ryujiro's words with his own gut feeling, Kakashi was certain that the severed mountain peaks and the changes in the Valley of the End were definitely linked to Ryujiro. Although I lack evidence, I felt a sense of threat from Ryujiro when I was with him. A sense of threat? Hiruzen's expression shifted. To make an elite jonin like you feel threatened is indeed concerning. Hiruzen gazed out at the scenery of Kanoha, lost in thought. All right, I understand. You may leave. Kakashi exited the Hokage's office. Yamato, try to test that kid for me. Yes, Hokagesama. At night, after training with Hinata, Ryujiro left the Hyuga compound. The streets of Kanoha were quiet at night, but Ryujiro seemed to sense something. Shoo shoo shoo. Several kunai flew towards Ryujiro. Armament hockey. Instead of drawing his sword, Ryujiro covered his hands with armament hockey and deflected the kunai. That mask. Ryujiro's expression shifted slightly. It's Yamato. It seemed the third Hokage already knew. Kakashi was suspicious after all. Now, Ryujiro no longer needed to hide his strength. The reason he concealed his power before was that he hadn't reached the level of a Kage. But now that he had attained that level, he had no worries. The collision between Yamato's kunai and Ryujiro's armament hockey-covered fist produced a metallic clashing sound. Ding, ding, ding. As Yamato continued to fight, he became increasingly wary. This kid's taijutsu had reached such a level. What was the black substance on his hands? Was it ninjutsu or a kekiai genkai? This kid under the third Hokage was truly extraordinary. It was the third Hokage who sent you, right? There's no need for further tests. Take me to see him. The armament hockey on Ryujiro's hands had disappeared as he looked calmly at Yamato. This maturity. Yamato gained another impression of Ryujiro. Follow me. Yamato said coldly. It was already late at night, but the lights in the Hokage's office were still on. As the Hokage, there was no rest until all the village's affairs were settled. Hokagesama, Ryujiro is here. From outside the door, Yamato's voice echoed. Hiruzen paused his work and looked at the incoming Ryujiro with some surprise. Raising his hand, Hiruzen saw Yamato's figure disappear from the Hokage's office. Previously, Hiruzen had heard of Ryujiro's various exploits but had never truly seen him in person. Now, up close, the aura emanating from this kid was undeniable. Kanoha had produced another genius on par with Kakashi. Perhaps in a few years, another master of swordsmanship like Sakumo would emerge. Ryujiro, this should be our first meeting. Yes, Hokagesama. Since Yamato brought you here, you must have fought with him. Ryujiro nodded lightly. You should know my purpose in having Yamato test you. Hiruzen's cloudy eyes suddenly sharpened. Facing Hiruzen's sharp gaze, Ryujiro stared back without any hint of fear. Hokage-sama, you just want to know if what Kakashi said is true. Ryujiro laid his cards on the table. Concealing his strength blindly was useless. Only by truly showing his power could he inspire fear. The incidents at the Valley of the End were indeed caused by me. But just the day before, I fought with Itachi Uchiha. What? He fought Itachi too. Hiruzen's eyes widened. A strong sense of astonishment reflected in them. Fight with Itachi? How could this be possible? Hiruzen knew Itachi's strength very well. Itachi had already activated his Manjikyu Sharingan. Even the third Hokage couldn't guarantee that he could match Itachi. For a moment, Hiruzen stopped thinking. After calming down for a while, he began to look seriously at Ryujiro. Who won between you and Itachi? Hiruzen asked solemnly. The outcome? Ryujiro pondered for a moment. If it was solely based on strength, he believed he far surpassed Itachi. However, Itachi still had Tsukuyami, Amaterasu, Susanoo, and other abilities. Moreover, he hadn't fought Itachi with his full strength so he couldn't be sure how would these abilities of Itachi fare against him. But even then, he believed he could easily defeat Itachi if they were to fight for real. And the main issue here was he didn't want to reveal all his cards in front of Hiruzen so he chose to give a diplomatic answer. It's 50-50, Ryujiro replied calmly. Hiruzen sucked in a breath after hearing what Ryujiro said. Did that mean the Ryujiro in front of him already possessed the strength of Akage? Of course, whether what Ryujiro said was true or not remained to be seen, but this kid in front of him was definitely not simple. This attitude, this composure? If Ryujiro's background wasn't clean, Hiruzen might have seen him as a threat. With your strength, you don't need to continue studying at the Ninja Academy. Yes, Hokagsama. 
This time I've come to apply for early graduation. Ryujiro stated plainly. Ryujiro knew he currently possessed great strength, but his power wasn't growing at the rate he wanted. So, to rapidly improve himself Ryujiro knew he had to face real-life combat and that couldn't be done staying in academy. That's why he wanted to graduate early and go on missions. I approve your application. With your strength, there's indeed no need for you to stay at the ninja school any longer. However, to confirm your strength, I will arrange for a jonin to test you. Is that okay with you? Hiruzen greatly admired the village's talents and appreciated civilian geniuses. However, he found it difficult to let go of Ryujiro. Ryujiro's personality and composure were not as straightforward as Minato's. When Hiruzen first saw Ryujiro, he knew that such a character would be difficult to control and restrain in the village. No problem, Hokage-sama. But it was just a jonin test. Even if it was an elite jonin like Kakashi, Ryujiro was confident he could defeat them. Moreover, it was just a test of strength. There was no need to exert 100% of his power. After Ryujiro left, Hiruzen lowered his head and sighed. Things are getting out of control. Ryujiro was indeed a genius. But if a genius grew too fast, it would make people wary because such individuals were prone to getting out of control. Especially for Hiruzen, who had experienced Orochimaru's betrayal. The next day, Hiruzen leaned against his head slightly, facing Danzo, who was holding a cane on the other side of the office. Danzo, if it's about Ryujiro, I'll say it again. I won't hand that child over to you. Danzo looked at his old friend with a gloomy gaze. Hiruzen, why don't you understand until now? Only Root can handle that child. Only powerful ninjas are qualified to bear the darkness of Kanoha. It's a waste of his talent to let other jonin guide him. As long as that child joins Root, I will personally guide him. That child is not like Minato. He won't be easily bound by others. Danzo insinuated with a cold gaze. With the ability to cut through mountains, that kid definitely had some secret. Once he obtained this secret jutsu, the position of Hokage would be within easy reach. No, no matter what you say, I won't hand this child over to Root. Root is not suitable for him. Hiruzen, you're still so naive. Someday you'll regret it. With a cold snort, Danzo left the Hokage's office in annoyance. Watching his departing figure, Hiruzen muttered to himself. Danzo, that kid's strength has already exceeded Root's control. He doesn't belong to Root, he belongs to Kanoha. We old folks will continue to shine the light on the village and let the new leaves sprout. Another ninja reaching the level of a Kage in swordsmanship was extremely important for Kanoha, especially now that they had lost the Achiha clan. The graduation application was scheduled for the afternoon, so Ryujiro was not in a hurry. Naruto had already become one of the top students in the academy. And there was nothing more for him to teach Naruto now. Let the timeline proceed as in the original story. He arrived at the Hyuga compound. Hayashi and Ryujiro sat at the table, while Hinata pushed open the door, brewed tea, and placed it in front of the two. I'm applying for early graduation, Ryujiro said lightly. Hinata's father, holding a cup of tea, suddenly paused as the cup floated in midair, but he quickly regained his composure. With your strength, you can indeed apply for early graduation. Ryujiro Kuen, Hinata hesitated, biting her lip. Suddenly, a hint of determination flashed in her eyes. Father, I also want to apply for early graduation with Ryujiro. No. Hayashi refused without even thinking Hinata's face turned pale instantly. Hayashi had seen Hinata's change in strength with his own eyes. But Hinata was the eldest daughter of the Hyuga clan, and now she was even more outstanding than Niji. In the future, Hinata would become the head of the Hyuga clan. And he didn't want her to be exposed to the darkness and dirt of the ninja world at such a young age. Why, father? Even if my strength is not as good as Ryujiro's, it's still far stronger than an average genin. I have nothing more to learn at the ninja school now, Hinata said with reluctance. Continuing at the ninja school would only widen the gap between her and Ryujiro. Hinata didn't want to be left behind by Ryujiro. You are the eldest daughter of the family. To become a ninja, strength alone is not enough. Intervening in ninja affairs recklessly could cost you your life. Hayashi looked at her solemnly. Although on the surface, Hayashi seemed indifferent to Hinata, how could he ignore his love for his daughter? Unlike Ryujiro, Hinata's attitude, composure, and sharpness were already impossible to hide. Hayashi seemed to see the former Kanoha white fang once again. Hinata, what your father said is not wrong. A ninja's hands are stained with blood. Ryujiro agreed with Hinata's father. Hinata's current strength could indeed spar with low-level Chunin, 
but her strength was still too weak. This world hid many powerful ninjas. Each member of Akatsuki alone could be compared to a Kage-level ninja. Moreover, Hinata, with the Byakugan, would inevitably attract the attention of other villages besides the Hyuga clan. Ryujiro, I'm afraid I can't keep up with your pace, Hinata said, sounding like a distressed little girl. Sighing inwardly, Ryujiro gently embraced Hinata and said, Even if one day I stand at the pinnacle of this world, I will still be the Ryujiro you know. In that moment, the way Hinata and Hayashi looked at Ryujiro changed. What ambition and determination. To aspire to the pinnacle of the ninja world. Wanting to become a god of shinobi like the first Hokage. Under Ryujiro's comforting words, Hinata gradually calmed down. She silently agreed with Ryujiro and her father's words. Why are there so many jonins gathered at school today? Kakashi Hataki, Kurinai Yuhi, Asuma Saratobi, my guy, the academy student, all exclaimed. Hey, have you heard? It seems that Ryujiro has applied for early graduation. Could these jonins be here to test Ryujiro? What? Early graduation? The kids from the ninja school all gasped. Even though not everyone in the ninja school was in the same class, everyone knew Ryujiro, the top student. Even the older students were no match for this Ryujiro. Applying for early graduation, only a genius could do such a thing, and Ryujiro happened to be that kind of genius. Listening to the conversation, Sasuke in the classroom clenched his fists, his body trembling slightly. That guy actually applied for early graduation. And he was still at the ninja school. When would he be able to kill Itachi? If he had that kind of strength, maybe he could have prevented that tragedy that night. It's Ryujiro. Well... Ryujiro is so handsome, he's like the man of my dreams. Why does Ryujiro, who is only a year older than us, look so tall? When Ryujiro appeared at the Ninja Academy, all the students were excited. The dream of every student in the academy was to become an outstanding ninja, and naturally, they admired the strong. Kakashi, is this the boy you were talking about? What do you think, Kurinai? This kid is quite extraordinary. Asuma lit a cigarette, took a deep drag and said with relish. Kurinai looked at Ryujiro, then glanced at the excited students around her. He's quite popular. But this child is indeed different, that kind of unmistakable sharpness is not common for kid his age. Ryujiro, you applied for early graduation without informing me. That's so annoying. Naruto came out dissatisfied. Ryujiro smiled faintly, there's no need to make a big fuss about early graduation, but it seems like you all know now. It seemed like the news had been spread by the third Hokage. Was it to create the birth of a genius and make Ryujiro popular across the village, and also show Kanoha's might to other villages? Indeed, the more popular the genius, the easier it was to be bound by the village. Ryujiro understood this little trick of the third Hokage. Ryujiro, now that you've done it, I also want to apply for early graduation too? Who? The third Hokage won't agree. Ryujiro glanced lightly at Naruto. As the Jinchuriki, even if Naruto's performance at school was really outstanding, because of his special status, the third Hokage would not let Naruto graduate early. Ryujiro, you're underestimating me. Although I'm not powerful like you, my strength is not bad. Even now, I can fight evenly with that arrogant Sasuke. Naruto looked proud, who would have thought that two years ago he was the last in the class. Now he could fight evenly with Sasuke. Genius? Is Naruto a genius? He is now. Hey. It's Hokagima. The appearance of the third Hokage caused a commotion among the students. Even Naruto looked at the third Hokage with admiration. After all, Naruto's dream was to become Hokage, someone recognized by everyone. Hokage-sama. Hiruzen walked up to the four jonin, and they respectfully greeted him. It seemed that everyone in the school knew, the effect of spreading the news was quite impressive. Can we start now, Hokage-sama? Hiruzen nodded slightly. With the permission of the third Hokage, Kakashi solemnly announced, Ryujiro, based on your performance at school, Hokage-sama has agreed to your graduation application. However, this assessment will be practical combat, and according to the instructions of the third Hokage, your combat assessment subject is none other than me. Hearing this, many people gasped, even the other three jonin stared at Kakashi with wide eyes. Is this a joke? The one Ryujiro must fight is actually jonin Kakashi. Even if Ryujiro is amazing, he can't possibly be a match for a jonin. Kakashi-san is already a well-known jonin, the famous copy ninja. Asuma looked at Hiruzen with incomprehension. What was his old man thinking? How could this kid possibly pass the assessment when facing Kakashi? Does his old man have some other plan? 
Kurinai frowned. It seemed that the Hokage and Kakashi knew something. Could this kid still have some secrets? But no matter what, Kurinai also believed that Ryujiro had a slight chance of winning against Kakashi. Kakashi and Ryujiro stood facing each other, and Kakashi, who knew everything, looked at the seemingly indifferent Ryujiro with seriousness. Was what Ryujiro said true? Although the students at the ninja school all believed that Ryujiro wouldn't win against Kakashi, they were still looking forward to see Ryujiro's strength in this fight. How many moves could he last against a jonin? Start! With a command from the third Hokage, Ryujiro's figure disappeared in an instant. Is it the body flicker jutsu? Kakashi's heart sank, his right hand holding a kanai was placed in front of his chest. Ding! With a sound, Kakashi was sent flying a distance by a heavy force. Such a heavy attack. Was that black substance the thing the third Hokage mentioned? Possibly a Kekiai Genkai? It could harden the body, achieving a steel-like effect. This was his ability. What is that black substance? Kekiai Genkai? But Ryujiro's parents were just ordinary jonin, neither of them had a Kekiai Genkai. Kakashi seems to be getting serious. Kakashi dashed around Ryujiro, throwing several shuriken from his hand. Clang clang clang. Ryujiro dispelled his armament hockey, unsheathed his sword, and swung it a few times, causing the incoming shuriken to scatter on the ground. Meanwhile, Kakashi swiftly formed hand seals. Fire release. Great fireball jutsu. Kakashi took a deep breath, gathering chakra in his throat, then spewed out a massive fireball towards Ryujiro. The students of the Ninja Academy, witnessing Kakashi's execution of the Great Fireball Jutsu, erupted into gasps. The Great Fireball Jutsu. Indeed, the scale of Chakra and the range of the Jutsu were different. It was twice as large as Sasuke's Great Fireball. However, it was just a Great Fireball. Swoosh, a plain and simple slash descended, a dazzling blade flashed before everyone's eyes. Boom, a slash towering 7 to 8 meters high tore through the Academy's training ground. The exaggerated power and suffocating sensation caused Kakashi's eyes to contract involuntarily. Was this a slash? The massive fireball instantly split into two halves and exploded, causing the training ground to tremble. But the slash didn't stop there, it rapidly spread towards Kakashi's position. The speed of the slash wasn't slow, but visually, it gave a sense of slow propagation. When Kakashi came to his senses, he instantly used body flicker jutsu to evade this terrifying slash. Rumble. The moment the slash burst apart, countless rubble splattered, leaving a horrifying trench on the school's training ground. The moment Kakashi appeared with body flicker, Ryujiro had already captured Kakashi's position. A residual image remained in place. A horizontally sweeping blade again appeared dazzlingly before Kakashi's eyes, freezing everything for a moment. The cold blade pressed against Kakashi's neck, making him stiff. Ryujiro grinned. Looks like I've won, Kakashi-sen. When the dust settled, the students of the Ninja Academy looked at the horrifying silhouette on the ground, wearing expressions of disbelief. Such a perception. Asuma looked at Ryujiro in shock, his turbulent heart unable to calm down for a long time. I lost. Kakashi sighed helplessly. The students of the academy were astonished, watching the man with short hair and dark green eyes. What was that reddish dark slash just now? Ryujiro defeated Kakashi-san? Doesn't that mean he's already on par with Jonin? Looking at the straight crack on the ground, the students of the Ninja Academy wore expressions of horror, unable to calm down for a long time. Sasuke clenched his fists, his blood-red eyes showing black Tomo. Why? Why was the gap between him and Ryujiro so huge, when he was supposed to be the Uchiha prodigy? If he had such strength, could he have prevented the tragedy from happening that day? Power. I need more power. The crazy thought sprouted in Sasuke's heart, the seed of hatred rapidly growing within him. Ryujiro is truly amazing. Was that dark slash produced by swordsmanship? I've never seen such terrifying swordsmanship. It's as if I saw myself in the past, my youth is still burning. Might Guy looked at Ryujiro with passionate eyes. At this moment, both Kurinai and Asuma wore expressions of disbelief, staring wide-eyed at Ryujiro. Even though Kakashi had held back, the fight ended much faster than they had expected. In that instant, this young man seemed to anticipate where Kakashi would appear. Such keen perception, even the sensory ninja in the village might not have such outstanding perception. This kid. He's a genius even more terrifying than Kakashi was in his youth. At this moment, the entire examination site fell into silence, with only the sound of the breeze whispering in their ears. 
All the Jonin present understood that Kanoha would once again have a young talent even more outstanding than Kakashi. Back then, Hataki Sakumo, with his swordsmanship, made the other four major ninja villages fearful of his sword skills, making Kanoha truly the number one ninja village. But just because of the village and Danzo's plan, public opinion gradually pushed Sakumo onto the path of suicide, ultimately causing Kanoha to lose a top-level ninja for no reason. Hiruzen stood up, looking at Ryujiro's relieved smile. He solemnly announced, In the name of Hokage, I officially declare that Ryujiro has successfully passed the assessment and officially becomes a Kanoha Genin. Hiruzen wanted to directly promote Ryujiro to Jonin, but that would seem unfair to other students and even to other Genin and Chunin present in the village. To become a Jonin of Kanoha Village, a ninja needed to follow certain steps. Not even geniuses like Kakashi or Itachi were directly promoted to Jonin. Even Kakashi had to apply for early graduation, complete missions, pass the Chunin exams and again complete missions of high rank to be promoted to rank of Jonin. It was the same for Itachi who did all that, became Chunin and later got directly promoted to Umbu Captain. Kanoha Village once again welcomed a stunning swordsmanship genius. The students of the Ninja Academy admired Ryujiro. Although they entered the Ninja Academy, it didn't mean they could pass the graduation assessment smoothly. But Ryujiro not only graduated early but also successfully became a genin. The key was that Ryujiro's opponent in the actual combat was not an ordinary ninja but the long-standing famous Kakashi. At this moment, countless students regarded Ryujiro as their idol, aspiring to become proud figures like him in the future. After completing all the procedures, Hiruzen personally placed the Kanoha headband on Ryujiro's head. Congratulations, Ryujiro, on becoming a genin. Although your strength is outstanding, becoming a ninja requires more than just strength. Which one of the four jonin present here would you like to be your teacher? Hiruzen smiled kindly. Choosing a jonin instructor. <laughs> Ryujiro glanced around. With his strength, he didn't really need a jonin instructor, but just graduated ninjas needed a jonin instructor to accompany them to undertake village missions. Among the present jonin, Kurinai and Asuma were not even within Ryujiro's consideration, they were both took weak. Might Guy, who possessed the eight gates, well, Ryujiro did have some thoughts about the eight gates. With his powerful physique and the possibility of unlocking additional character templates, if he could learn the eight gates, he would be able to face monsters of six paths level. Hokage-sama, I choose Gai-sensei. Ryujiro looked at Hiruzen and said, My guy? Ryujiro's choice surprised Hiruzen. He originally thought Ryujiro would choose an elite jonin like Kakashi. But unexpectedly, he chose Mike Guy, who specialized in Taijutsu, which was quite unexpected. Might Guy widened his eyes, looking at Ryujiro incredulously. Had he misheard? Ryujiro actually chose him as his jonin instructor. This was simply too unexpected. Guy, Ryujiro has chosen you as his jonin instructor. Do you agree? Hiruzen looked at Guy and asked slowly. Hokage-sama, I am willing to become Ryujiro's jonin instructor. At the same time, a smile appeared on Might Guy's face, revealing his white teeth, as he gave a thumbs up to Ryujiro. Young Ryujiro, welcome aboard. After Ryujiro passed the assessment, Hiruzen put a lot of effort into promoting him. There was no shortage of publicity about Ryujiro, especially regarding his connection to the third Hokage. Now, the villagers were all well aware about that. Once again, Kanoha had produced a ninja whose swordsmanship rivaled even Kanoha's white fang. Five months had passed, and the ninja academy was once again on holiday. Outside the village of Kanoha, in an open field, a figure dashed like lightning, leaving trails of fire and lightning in its wake. The aura emanating from Ryujiro was immense, almost suffocating. It wasn't the presence of a ninja that one felt in his presence, but that of a tailed beast. The chakra swirling around him was like a raging tide, ready to engulf anything in its path when unleashed. Ryujiro is truly a genius. In just five months, he managed to open the fourth gate of the eight inner gates, Guy, while teaching Ryujiro the eight inner gates, was increasingly amazed. If it weren't for Ryujiro's mastery of swordsmanship reaching an otherworldly level, Guy would have suggested he focus solely on Taijutsu. The eight inner gates themselves released the body's limitations on chakra, allowing for an explosive surge of excess chakra that could increase one's strength several times over. Is opening the fourth gate already my limit? Ryujiro furrowed his brow, feeling somewhat dissatisfied. Even with just the fourth gate, his body felt waves of stinging pain. Opening the fifth gate forcibly would likely result in uncontrollable chakra backlash. The power of the gate of pain when activated will increase several times. 
Ryujiro's deep eyes suddenly sharpened. Zing. Accompanied by the unsheathing of his sword, dazzling blade lights suddenly flashed. A terrifying aura erupted, and sudden winds overturned everything around in an instant. Boom. A pitch black slash, spanning over 20 meters, explosively surged forward like a roaring dragon, its might truly astonishing. The ground trembled incessantly, and rubble turned to powder beneath the slash. When the dust settled as the slash disappeared, a crack, spanning hundreds of meters due to the slash, appeared before Mike Guy's eyes. Rumble. The earth shook, and due to the force of the slash, another crack, jagged and sprawling, suddenly spread from the other end, extending towards Ryujiro's feet. The power of the slash has approximately doubled. This outcome was within Ryujiro's expectations. At this moment, Guy, with widened eyes, looked on in shock, staring at the deep crater before him. Even an S-level ninjutsu might not be as powerful as that slash, and in Guy's eyes, the slash was instantaneous. Even Guy didn't see clearly what just happened right now, he only heard the sharp sound of swords. He just heard a deafening sound, and then saw the abyss crack in front of him. Ahem, cough, cough, it seems I have nothing to teach you except the eight gates. Guy looked at Ryujiro with a bitter look on his face. If Ryujiro hadn't been attracted to eight gates, would he still have chosen him? Gai-sensei, as a ninja, I still need your guidance. You don't have to say such things. Ryujiro said modestly. Ugh. Due to his mature and humble personality, even Guy was attracted by Ryujiro's unique temperament. After Ryujiro left, Guy came there with a few people. Kurinai, Asuma, and Kakashi all looked at the scene in front of them with shocked expressions in their eyes. Is this the effect of Ryujiro's swordsmanship? During the last assessment, Ryujiro concealed his true strength. Is this his true power? Even Sakumo-san's swordsmanship wouldn't be able to produce a slash like Ryujiro's? This level of power has already surpassed us? Indeed. The four fell into silence. They didn't know what else to say besides shock and horror. Such a young boy at the level of a Kage was unheard of in the history of the ninja world. They were grateful that such a monster was born in Kanoha. If born in an enemy nation, undoubtedly, it would have added a formidable enemy to Kanoha. Kakashi, looking at the slash stretching a hundred meters before them, fell into deep silence. In five months, Ryujiro's template progress had slowed compared to before. It seemed that fighting with Myhawk was no longer significantly enhancing his swordsmanship. Character Template Dracul Myhawk Character Unlock Progress 76% In five months, it had only increased by less than 3%. He needed to find a way to enhance his strength as soon as possible. His current strength was not enough for him to be content and feel safe. Only with great strength could one find peace of mind. As Ryujiro walked down the street he suddenly stopped, looking at the young boy whose aura was now filled with coldness, different from before. Ryujiro sighed silently in his heart. Sasuke, if you have any thoughts of challenging me, it's best to dismiss them early. We are now in different dimensions. Sasuke's face twisted with ferocity as he looked at Ryujiro. I'm different from before. I have improved. Ryujiro looked into Sasuke's eyes, his expression changing slightly, but soon he calmed down. His Sharingan has been awakened, but it's still not enough. A terrifying aura suddenly erupted from Ryujiro's body, sweeping towards Sasuke. Sasuke's Sharingan returned to its normal black color instantly, staring at Ryujiro in shock, his legs unable to support him as he fell to the ground. As Ryujiro passed by Sasuke, his cold voice reached Sasuke's ears. Compared to Itachi, you're not even a genius. I advise you to give up on revenge as soon as possible. When you meet Itachi, you won't even have the power to escape. Sasuke's face froze for a moment, then twisted suddenly, his fists weakly pounding the ground as he let out a hoarse roar. Under Ryujiro's provocation, the seeds of hatred in Sasuke's heart began to grow madly. Hearing Sasuke's hoarse roar from behind, Ryujiro's lips curled into a faint smile. With his observation hockey, Ryujiro could feel the skyrocketing hatred emanating from Sasuke. He knew doing this would increase Sasuke's hatred towards Itachi, but he didn't care. Even if Itachi saw the scene, he wouldn't say anything. On the contrary, he might thank Ryujiro in his heart for nurturing the seed of hatred in Sasuke's heart. Conqueror's hockey. It's so useful in these situations, especially against fodders. The aura that erupted from Ryujiro earlier was precisely Conqueror's hockey. And this Conqueror's Haki wasn't awakened due to Myhawk's template. It was Ryujiro's own Conqueror's Haki. Five months had passed, and Ryujiro had become a frequent visitor to the Hyuga house. 
Hayashi already regarded Ryujiro as his son-in-law. A son-in-law whose strength rivaled that of the Kage. What more could Hayashi desire? The members of the Hyuga clan were also full of awe for Ryujiro. Niji looked unwillingly at Ryujiro and Hinata. Was this the fate of the branch family? His fate was to never resist the separation of the branch family. There was a hint of despair in Niji's heart. While accompanying Hinata in training, Ryujiro noticed Niji's gaze. Looking at Niji's desolate eyes, Ryujiro couldn't help but wonder what he was thinking. Ryujiro, brother Niji? Hinata also noticed that Niji's mood seemed off, and his lonely demeanor looked somewhat pitiful. Continue training according to my method, Hinata. I'll go find your father. Ryujiro responded. At this time, Hayashi had just finished the main family meeting. Several elders greeted Ryujiro politely when they saw him. Ryujiro. Ryujiro responded lightly. Hayashi wasn't too surprised to see Ryujiro. He instructed the servants to bring two more cups of tea. Ryujiro is here. Take a seat. Ryujiro naturally sat down, looking at Hayashi without saying a word. Hayashi seemed to guess that Ryujiro had something to discuss, so he said, If you have anything to do, just tell me. Hayashi-sama, are you really not going to let Niji know the truth? Hayashi's body trembled, staring at Ryujiro with widened eyes. How do you know about this? Ryujiro didn't give a direct answer. Did Hayashi expect him to reveal every detail of the history of this world and everything that happened to each one of them? Give me a break. Hayashi sighed. I am most aware of Niji's hatred for the main family. But only by preserving that hatred in Niji's heart can we use his talent to grow rapidly. I'm not telling him because the time is not right yet. Hatred? Niji wasn't Sasuke. His inner hatred wasn't enough. When a more dazzling genius appeared by Hinata's side, the brilliance of a genius would also dim. You're wrong. That hatred precisely limits Niji's potential. His Ashisama died to protect you. He didn't want Niji to hold on to hatred against the main family, but to strive to protect the members of the main family. Ryujiro said lightly, Geniuses are often burdened with too much baggage, which limits their potential. Hayashi's heart trembled. It seemed he had been wrong all along. He forgot Hizashi's words. Please tell Niji that I didn't die to protect the main family, but to protect my brother and the village. Hizashi's words seemed to echo in his ears at this moment. Hayashi looked at Ryujiro with a complex expression. I really can't understand you more as the time passes. Hayashi-sama, just know that I have no ill intentions toward the Hyuga clan. After all, this is also Hinata's home. Ryujiro smiled, finished his tea, and then left. A few days later, Hayashi finally handed the scroll left by Hizashi to Niji. From that day on, Niji gradually let go of his hatred for the main family and became more respectful towards Hinata and Ryujiro. And his hatred shifted to the Kumogakure village. At the border of the Land of Fire, Gai and Ryujiro were scouting the area for other ninja. The news of the destruction of the Uchiha clan had spread throughout the ninja world, causing other countries' ninja to stir, wanting to take advantage of Kanoha's weakness. Sensei, I can search this area alone. You go to the other side. Gai understood Ryujiro's strength and had no objections. After instructing him, he went to search another area. After Gai left, Ryujiro's gentle gaze became sharp. His observation hockey had already locked onto the ninja hiding in the shadows. Although Ryujiro's strength was formidable now, his hands had never been stained with blood. This time, Ryujiro came out of the village to give himself a baptism of blood. The Iwagakure ninja hiding in the shadows saw Ryujiro, a mere genin, wandering on the border and immediately showed a cruel smile. Has Kanoha reached the point where they have no one else to send? To send a brat like this to the border? Don't waste time. Kill this brat quickly. Just as the Iwagakure ninja were about to attack Ryujiro, the young ninja they had been watching suddenly disappeared. First one. Swish. A dazzling flash of the blade shot out from its sheath, and the Iwagakure ninja's widened eyes revealed fear. Looking at Ryujiro's indifferent face, he realized that Ryujiro was not an ordinary genin, but a monster. In the blink of an eye, the flash of the blade had declared the fate of the Iwagakure ninja. A large amount of blood gushed out like a fountain, and the severed head rolled to the ground, leaving behind a trail of blood. The grass instantly turned bright red. Ryujiro's brow, only slightly furrowed, feeling a little discomfort. But there was no feeling of nausea at all. The remaining two Iwagakure ninja were filled with fear and immediately felt the threat of death. You damn brat! Earth release! Earth flow spears! The ground beneath Ryujiro's feet suddenly trembled and sharp rocks emerged from the ground in an instant. 
However, these tricks had no effect on Ryujiro. Where's that brat? Damn it. He's just a genin. What happened just now? That boy is not simple. Let's retreat for now. At this moment, a cold voice came from behind the two Iwagakure ninja. Wanna run? It's too late. Both of you will stay here. With a swift movement, two slashes cut through the bodies of the two Iwagakure ninja without any extra motion. Sizzle. Blood gushed out from their bodies, and they were split in half by Ryujiro's blade. In this area alone, besides these few ninja hiding, there were at least dozens of others with a presence not inferior to these two Iwagakure ninja. A cold figure shuttled through the border, accompanied by the flicker of blades, leaving behind one incomplete corpse after another. Apart from the sound of wind, there was no sound at the silent border, except for the invisible addition of corpses one after another. Guy also caught a few Sunagakure ninja on the other side, but when he came to Ryujiro's side he was stunned. What happened here? Bodies cut in half lay strewn on the ground, dark red color painting the earth in a crimson hue. These wounds were fatal cuts. He already knew who did this. Guy's expression darkened gradually, not because he was displeased with Ryujiro's actions, but because on the border of the Land of Fire, there were so many shinobi from other village Iwagakure, Kumogakure. What did they want gathering at the borders of Kanoha? The situation here was beyond his authority as a jonin. He had to report this to the third Hokage. However, how could Ryujiro endure the bloody scent in the air? He endured it because he had been in battles before. The number of corpses here was nothing compared to what he had seen. But Ryujiro, such a young boy who had never been to war. How could he withstand something he had never encountered before, the world of ninja and blood? Uh, a wail of agony echoed not far from Guy. Guy's expression shifted slightly, immediately rushing towards the source of the cry. He saw Ryujiro, but he was also struck by what he witnessed. Ryujiro was covered in blood, his clothes now stained with blood, and the tiny droplets of blood still dripped incessantly from the tip of his sword. What shocked Guy the most was that Ryujiro, as he looked at the corpses before him, showed no change in his eyes, as if he had become numb. In Ryujiro's eyes, Guy couldn't see any emotion, only indifference. Guy sensei you're here? A faint smile appeared on Ryujiro's face. But this smile made Guy feel somewhat uneasy. Ryujiro, are you okay? Guy was not worried about Ryujiro's physical injuries but his mental state. After all, all of this was the first time for Ryujiro. Could his mind handle the amount of blood on his hands? Because on the battlefield, there were many who collapsed mentally, especially someone like Ryujiro, a child. Guy sensei don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm more clear-headed right now. In fact I haven't felt this great since a long time. Ryujiro sheathed his sword, turning to look at Guy with a faint gaze. Before, perhaps he had been somewhat unaccustomed, but now Ryujiro was also numb to all these killings. With the number of shinobi dying at his hands, regardless of whether they were Iwagakure or Kumogakure shinobi, they were sliced apart by Ryujiro like cutting through a watermelon. These shinobi had no chance to resist before dying at Ryujiro's hands. I'm fine. Guy murmured softly as he looked at Ryujiro. What a terrifying mental resilience. Were geniuses like Ryujiro stronger not only in terms of mental strength but also in adapting to their environment than ordinary people? As expected of you, it might not be easy to handle the situation here. Let's return and report the mission first. You should clean up as soon as possible. After returning to the village, Guy submitted the mission and then returned to the Hokage's office. When Ryujiro arrived at the Hyuga house, almost everyone was taken aback. Hinata rushed out anxiously, not caring much, and threw herself onto Ryujiro, who was covered in blood stains. Ryujiro-kun, what happened exactly? Are you hurt? Why is there so much blood on you? As Hinata spoke, tears welled up in her eyes, as she carefully inspected every inch of Ryujiro's body. I'm fine. This blood is from the enemy. I need to clean up. Hinata, wait for me to finish cleaning up before you check again. The sticky blood made Ryujiro feel uncomfortable. Even though Hinata listened to Ryujiro's words, she still wasn't particularly reassured because the blood stains on Ryujiro hadn't dried yet, and some had stained her as well. With her head bowed, she said softly, Ryun, can I be with you? After saying this, tears instantly welled up in Hinata's eyes. Anyway, Ryujiro was a young man full of vitality. Hinata had already said it herself, could he refuse? However, during the process, Ryujiro didn't do anything. After all, Hinata was still young, and Ryujiro himself felt a sense of guilt. Now, Hinata's heart was already on Ryujiro, 
Even if they waited a few more years, it wouldn't matter. However, in front of Ryujiro, Hinata seemed quite petite, as the Ryujiro was already very tall. Character Template Dracul Myhawk Character Unlock Progress 78% Killing them has boosted my progress quite a bit. After Ryujiro killed a shinobi, his progress would increase a bit, which was somewhat similar to gaining experience points in an online game. It seemed like he would have to do more missions with Gai-sensei in the future for his progress to grow quickly. When his Myhawk template reached 100%, it might unlock the second character template. During the next period of time, most of Ryujiro's time was spent training with Hinata in the village. And Naruto also seemed to be diligently training to improve his strength. In the Hyuga Dojo, there were many wooden stakes placed, which were used for the Hyuga clan's gentle fist training. Since Ryujiro came to the Hyuga clan, this dojo had always been used by Ryujiro and Hinata alone. Of course, no one dared to vie for it. After all, this was under the order of the clan head, no one could disturb Hinata and Ryujiro in the dojo. 8 Trigrams Air Palm The shockwave produced by the air palm easily shattered the wooden stakes, and while accompanying Hinata's training, Ryujiro was also improving his observation hockey. He allowed Hinata to attack him at any time. And now even if it was the Hyuga clan's 64 palms, Ryujiro could easily dodge it. Reaching the pinnacle of observation hockey allowed one to see the future. He wondered if he could reach such a level himself. Just Hinata alone was no longer enough to make Ryujiro feel pressured. Hinata, stop for a moment. Hearing Ryujiro's words, Hinata stopped and looked at Ryujiro in confusion. Ryujiro pushed open the dojo's door and instructed the servant at the door, Go call Niji. Yes, Ryujiro-sama. After a while, Niji arrived at the dojo. Seeing Ryujiro and Hinata, he respectfully greeted them. Hinata-sama and Ryujiro? Ryujiro smiled at Niji in front of him. Niji, from today onwards, you will train with us. Niji widened his eyes in surprise, showing a grateful expression. Ryujiro, this won't do any good. I am just a branch family member, and besides, the clan head has ordered that no one can disturb you and Hinata-sama. It's okay. I will speak to Hinata's father about it. From today onwards, accompany me and Hinata in training. I don't like repeating myself. I hope you understand. After hesitating for a moment, Niji looked at Ryujiro with gratitude in his eyes. I understand, Ryujiro. Two years had passed, and Ryujiro could now open up to the sixth gate. During these two years, Ryujiro had not slackened in the slightest. Following the original timeline of the Naruto world, the plot leading to Fourth Great Ninja War had already begun. Currently, both Hinata and Niji had graduated early from the Ninja Academy, and their strength now rivaled that of Chunin. This was why Hayashi had agreed to Hinata's early graduation. Gentle Fist Style 8 Trigrams, 64 Palms 2 Palms, 4 Palms, 8 Palms, 16 Palms, 32 Palms 64 Palms Hinata and Niji teamed up against Ryujiro, but with the help of his observation hockey. Both of their attack patterns were deciphered by Ryujiro. Even if there were deviations or changes in position, with the assistance of observation hockey, he could easily evade their attacks. Even when facing the 64 palms head-on, Ryujiro remained unscathed. His armament hockey acted like an invisible armor protecting him. All of Hinata and Niji's gentle fist were dodged by Ryujiro. Impressive, Ryujiro. The gap between us is still immense. Hinata and Niji were sweating profusely. Ryujiro looked at them and smiled faintly. Both of your strengths are already impressive. No. Compared to you we're still weak, we will need to train harder. A hint of helplessness appeared on Ryujiro's face. Niji always seemed dissatisfied with his own strength, but now, compared to the original, he was much stronger. Having changed the plot, both Hinata and Niji had graduated early from the Ninja Academy, and it was unknown whether the Chunin exams would begin early. Kanoha Crush planned by now, the fourth Kazakage was probably dead at Orochimaru's hands. The Kanoha Crush plan was one of the key plot points in changing Kanoha's fate. Ryujiro felt that Kanoha should make some changes. Hiruzen was already old, and even if he sat in the Hokage's position, he was somewhat ineffective. Furthermore, Hiruzen's constant compromise with the Kanoha Council and his lack of assertiveness towards Danzo had led to the decay of Kanoha's roots. It was time for the wheels of Kanoha to turn once again. At night, Ryujiro's figure disappeared into the darkness and arrived at an open field. At this moment, a cold voice sounded strangely sinister under the moonlight. Ryujiro, it's been a while. You are even more intriguing now. Orochimaru's eyes revealed a hint of fanaticism. 
Disgusting, Virjimar. A trace of disgust flashed in Ryujiro's eyes. Hee hee, Ryujiro, you're different from those people. You are a commoner, yet you've reached heights that commoners can't achieve. What secrets does your body hide? It's really intriguing. I want to cut it open. Orochimaru spat out his snake tongue, his gaze on Ryujiro as if he wanted to devour him alive. Keep your dirty thoughts to yourself. You just want to use me as an experimental subject, or use my body for your next reincarnation? Am I right? Snick. Orochimaru's gaze changed, and a sharp murderous intent emanated from him. Ryujiro, it seems you know quite a bit, but the immortality jutsu is a forbidden jutsu I developed. Apart from me and one other person, no one else knows about it. How did you find out? Ryujiro looked at him indifferently. I know everything about you. <laughs> Orochimaru's expression finally became serious. This brat was indeed different. He was even more unfathomable than a few years ago. As a snake by instinct, he should have been a predator. But when he carefully observed Ryujiro, Orochimaru felt that Ryujiro was his natural enemy. However, Orochimaru was not afraid. Instead, he was even more excited, and the madness on his face became even more intense. Ryujiro, you're amazing. I can't wait to uncover the secrets within you. Hidden shadow snake hands. Many poisonous snakes flew out from Orochimaru's sleeves, their sharp fangs open wide, flying towards Ryujiro. Ryujiro's gaze suddenly turned cold. I really hate snakes, Orochimaru. With a swing of his sword, snake heads rolled on the ground, and at the same time, a terrifying aura erupted from Ryujiro's body. Conqueror's hockey swept over the surroundings, creating an invisible storm. Orochimaru's eyes couldn't help but contract, and his whole body trembled for a moment. This aura, cold sweat broke out on Orochimaru's forehead as he looked at Ryujiro in fear, his eyes filled with dread as he gazed into Ryujiro's hawk-like eyes. The natural enemy of snakes is hawks. Looking at those sharp eyes, Orochimaru felt like he was facing a fierce hawk. For a moment, even Orochimaru was briefly distracted by the conqueror's hockey. Ryujiro's patience was limited, but dealing with Orochimaru, a troublesome opponent, wasn't as simple as making him pay a price easily. Orochimaru also realized that his previous plans were no longer feasible, because the current Ryujiro had grown to be a ninja who was not inferior to himself. Hee hee I see now. It seems I was too arrogant, but Ryujiro, I know now which category you belong to. You won't be easily bound by Kanoha. Someone like you belongs to the shinobi world. I look forward to our next meeting. In the darkness, Orochimaru's figure gradually disappeared. An annoying snake. Ryujiro sheathed his sword. Although Orochimaru was detestable, Ryujiro had to admit that he was an outstanding scientist. In order to achieve immortality, he developed forbidden jutsus like the immortality jutsu. In a certain sense, this was also a form of immortality. However, this kind of immortality required changing bodies every few years, which was the price of immortality. In fact, Ryujiro had thought that if the bloodlines of the Uchiha and Atsutsuki clans could be transplanted, perhaps only Orochimaru could do it. Apart from his own strength, Ryujiro also considered that if Hinata's Byakugan could undergo a change, perhaps he wouldn't have to worry too much about her safety. The Sharingan's ultimate form was the Rinnegan, while the Hyuga clan's Byakugan was the Tensigen. But for the Byakugan to evolve into the Tensigen, it required the chakra of the Atsutsuki clan. Although the Hyuga clan had the bloodline of the Atsutsuki clan, it was still too thin to meet the conditions for evolving into the Tensigen. The Tensigen was no less powerful than the Rinnegan. It possessed the power of creation and destruction. That was the power of the Six Paths Orochimaru. The next time he saw him, he should remind this mischievous snake to be more mindful. A year later, as the number of missions Ryujiro undertook with Guy increased, the amount of blood on his hands became countless. He himself didn't even know how many enemy ninjas he had killed in this past year, and Ryujiro's name as a genin had spread to the ears of several major villages. However, many unexpected events occurred during this year for Ryujiro, one of which was that Naruto and the others had graduated half a year ago. And this week, ninjas from several other major villages also arrived in Kanoha to participate in the Chunin exams. The Chunin exams were earlier than expected, the timeline was completely shifted forward, which caught Ryujiro off guard. At this moment, Kanoha was much livelier than usual, looking at the ninjas from other countries in Kanoha. Ryujiro couldn't help but frown. Is it because of my influence that the Chunin exam is happening early? As the teams sent by various villages arrived one after another, Kanoha became lively. Especially when the fourth Kazakage arrived, 
It caused a lot of discussion among the people of Kanoha, the fourth Kazakage. Ryujiro's eyes narrowed involuntarily. The fourth Kazakage, Raza, had long been dead at the hands of Orochimaru. The current fourth Kazakage was either Orochimaru in disguise or someone impersonating him. That guy Orochimaru seemed to be ready to cause trouble in Kanoha. The Chunin exams were just a small episode for Ryujiro. With only a week left until the exams, the other genin were all preparing for it. And at this moment, Gara and his group had already arrived in Kanoha. Ah, Kanoha is still interesting. I've already grown tired of our village. Ryujiro's gaze was involuntarily drawn to them. It was the three of them. The future fifth Kazakage, Gara, Temari, and Kankuro. The strength of these three was not less than of Chunin at all. At this time, it seemed that most of the genin advancing from the Chunin exams were talented ninjas like Gara. Whether it was due to the attraction of strong individuals, Gara's attention was also focused on Ryujiro. That guy was a strong one. Tamari and Kankuro also noticed the fervor in Gara's eyes. That boy had caught Gara's attention. It's really pathetic. Kanoha's genin. Tamari and Kankuro knew very well what kind of monster Gara was. Even the thought of him still made them feel afraid. Eh. Ryujiro smiled faintly. He turned and left the bustling street. For Ga, one tails Jinchuriki, this exam was really something to look forward to. A week passed, and Ryujiro arrived at the venue of the Chunin exams. At this time, there were also a few more people in Mike Guy's team. Tenten, Niji, Rockley, and Hinata. Originally, Hinata's supervising Jonin should have been Kurinai, but perhaps because of Ryujiro's influence, Hinata still chose Mike Guy. Ryujiro, Hinata-sama. At this point, Niji was full of respect for both Ryujiro and Hinata, and he vowed to live to protect Hinata and Ryujiro. Is this Ryujiro? Tenten and Lee couldn't help but focus their gaze on Ryujiro. Although they were both students of Gai-sensei, they had never seen Ryujiro in all the time they had been with Gai-sensei. However, not seen doesn't mean not hearing about Ryujiro's name. It's impossible for them not to know how famous he is. Graduating as the top student from the Ninja Academy and winning against a Jonin in the graduation exam, such brilliant achievements were hard to imagine. The exam is about to start, let's go in quickly. At this moment, Ten Ten hurriedly said, the first exam was quite simple. At this moment, the exam hall for the Chunin exams was already filled with people, and what surprised Ryujiro was that Tamari was also in this exam hall. This Chunin exams was divided into two exam halls, and the main examiner on Ryujiro's side was not Marino Ibiki. This guy was also in this exam hall. Tamari glanced at Ryujiro without paying much attention to him. In her eyes, Ryujiro was already a dead man, and the fate of anyone targeted by Gara was extremely tragic. Tamari didn't think a Kanoha ninja could stand up to Gara. As usual, the first exam was a written test. The main examiner casually explained the rules of the exam hall, and then the test papers were distributed to all the examinees. For Ryujiro, these test papers were like elementary school papers, with no difficulty at all. But many examinees showed a dumbfounded expression. The exam questions might be simple for Ryujiro, but not for others. Some examinees had already started to panic and pull their hair out. As for Tamari, when she saw the test paper, she also showed a hint of difficulty on her face. Many examinees, unable to solve the problems, began to consider cheating, but they were caught by the examiner and directly disqualified from the Chunin exams. Don't even think about cheating. If I catch any of you little brats, you won't even think about becoming Chunin in this lifetime. The voice of the main examiner warned coldly. For most examinees, this was undoubtedly torture. They racked their brains to write as many answers as possible. Some who couldn't solve the problem simply gave up and left the exam hall. However, unlike most people, one of the examinees kept writing on the test paper. The sound of his pen scratching on the paper attracted everyone's attention, and they all looked at Ryujiro writing non-stop on the test paper. Even Tamari felt a bit surprised. Was this guy just randomly scribbling, or were these questions really not difficult for him? and the main examiner glanced at Ryujiro and then withdrew his gaze. This group of kids must be dumbfounded. This is our Kanoha genius, Ryujiro, whose swordsmanship is even more terrifying than that of the White Fang of Kanoha. Since Ryujiro and Mike Guy returned from that border mission, Ryujiro's achievements had been announced by the high-level officials of Kanoha and posted prominently to inform everyone in the village. It's hard to imagine that all the incomplete bodies outside the borders of the Kanoha were done by Ryujiro. It is said that on that day, the ninja who went to clean up the border couldn't bear it and vomited. Such a scene is truly unimaginable. 
A genius is indeed a genius. If he were like an ordinary person, would he still be a genius? Ryujiro spent less than half of the exam's allotted time. After finishing the last question, he handed in his paper without even checking it. Such behavior undoubtedly stabbed a knife into the hearts of the other examinees. Damn it. Is this guy serious? Only half the time has passed, and this boy really has the confidence to pass the exam? As time passed quickly, the exam time became shorter, and many impatient students had already stopped thinking too much because of the shortened time. They wrote down everything they could think of related to the questions on the test paper. Except for Tamari, most people only turned in their papers at the last minute of the exam. And among them, only Ten Ten and Rock Lee didn't have any confidence in passing this exam at all. But fortunately, when the results were announced, neither Ten Ten nor Rock Lee was eliminated. This made both of them breathe a sigh of relief. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.